YouTube make less. But right now it's just the judges. Uh, this is Mike Nogans, who's in Germany right now. Um, this is my co-lead. Uh, uh, Justin Orman is in Tennessee. And he's a USA North American judge. And uh, this is kind of like a Saskatchewan pirate. Way better at this AV stuff than the international broadcasting. He did, he did all of it for us last year. I just kind of showed up. We only had 17 teams last year total in the world. This time we've got 44 in North America. We in Asia. We cut registration. So let's go look at YouTube and see if we're up. Oh, I should introduce these guys to the judges. Uh, this is Jason, last name is Eagleston. Eagleston. He's the product owner for TechSmith's Snagit product. And we've got Jess Lancaster, who is uh, our test manager for uh, TechSmith. Hey, Jess. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Real good. So, am I on YouTube yet? My channel. Yes, it's live. We're live. So I can email people. Sorry about the typing, guys. I know it's annoying. I could maybe mute for you while I type. There's the mute D button. Usually Hangouts mute for you if you're typing. That's weird. Yeah. The, the one piece we kind of notice when you type is that the entire screen shakes. Seeing Matt, you are muted now. Oh. Yeah, I'm still typing. I'm, just, just, oh. I'm sending a notification by Twitter and by email that we're going live. Where do you want to have the questions posted? Questions in the comments of the YouTube. So I've got the YouTube up, and somebody somebody leave a comment so I can see it. Should, it should it should populate in real time, I think. Yeah, last year we found there was a little bit of a delay, but not a huge one. Yeah, it's, a, it's twenty seconds behind or something like that. I don't I don't know about the comments. They might be a little they might be a little more. So did any participants get the email link with the with the um, the URLs? Can we talk about it? Um, I haven't seen the YouTube link yet. Um, Y'all are judges, so I don't think you get the email. We have to get in touch with somebody that's not. Um, Matt Hauser, live now. What do you mean? What? No, oh, I just found your YouTube stream. Yeah.
Awesome. Uh, is, there, is there a way in the last seconds? We've got 13 viewers, so we've got more viewers than judges. So we got players that are viewing. How many How viewers many? are judges? We have 14 viewers, and we have four. So 10 people are viewing that are um, at our competitors, and there's four messages in the chat. Okay, they're okay. They're all from judges. So if you're a competitor, leave messages in the the YouTube channel. If you need a link to the YouTube channel. I can get that right now. We have a competitor that has responded. They are ins installing the system under test now. Oh, I could be viewers. So we've got more viewers than judges. Oh, I got a bunch of. I got a bunch so of. So we have players that are viewing. Oh, feedback. Okay, installing the software under test. Oh, Jason is the product owner of the software under test. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Snagit and what it works, who the customers are? Sure. Uh, so Snagit, um, if you haven't heard of it, uh, has been around for over 20 years, actually. And what it does at the basic level is uh, take what you see on your screen and take images, videos of that, that content. And then from there, um, you can annotate that content. You can uh, enhance it. I guess augment it so that uh, whoever you're sharing with can better understand what you're trying to explain to them versus you know, a four-page email that uh, is going to try to explain the exact same content. So um, the, the customer is, is uh, very broad in terms of who, who uses uh, Snagit. In general, if you wanted to you know, hone in on one particular um, industry that tends to use it a lot is people who are creating documentation. You're making um, training content or a help file for your software. Um, it could be that you're a blogger that's just trying to get, um, you, know, you're, you, you write software blogs where you're you know, explaining to people how to use some new product. You're doing a review of uh, another piece of software. Snagit can uh, help you do that documentation. Um, keep track of the things that you're capturing in your digital life, so to speak. So that's one documentation. Your one persona. Um, there are a number of others. Uh, people that use Snagit tend to um, not just keep their content to themselves. So typically they're sharing it out to someone else, whether that be just in a Word document that they're building up a, a uh, a bigger project or some other bigger piece of uh, content, or they're just emailing it to someone. They just want to show them what they're seeing on their screen, whether it be a, a lot of people use it for testing, whether, which is something you could use Snagit for today is the bugs that you find in Snagit, you can take captures of them in Snagit. And we've got a little video for you that can show you how to make that work. You should have that. You should have that email already from us about how you how to get that. I was going to say that. Um, where is it? Let's see if I can find it. Oh, shoot. I um. I actually was using Snagit to yesterday on the organizing team to send notes back and forth about how we should format our emails, and I'm trying to find that right now. To Uve and make. Sometimes for me it can get kind of uh, meta because today I spent a lot of time making videos or images of Snagit. So that's a, you know, that's what I do a lot. Um, but typically what people do is they're taking images or videos of things that they're trying to explain to someone or ask a question about. And Snagit can really uh, help a lot there. Yeah, here's this. This let's see if I can show you guys. I'll, I'll see if I can get to the chat. Thanks, Jason. I'll get right to it in a second. But just to do a screen share real quick of my desktop, instead of a picture of us. Oh, no, it's, that's, I love the way it does that. But if you can see it, yeah. This is actually a picture that I, we had an email of, here's the email that we're going to send to everybody, Matt. What do you think? And I said, we got to make this a link, and we have to add an extra carriage return here. And I just marked it up with Snagit. Uh, Perfect. For that matter, so Snagit is kind of lightweight, does videos, but there's an a, a parent. Uh, 
there is a cousin product called Camtasia that you can use for screen captures. That's how I did the How to Use Agile Manager uh, video, which you saw earlier. And I got to stop it. It's got to stop. Stop it. Let's go back to um, not screen share. Can we not do that. How do I not do that? There we are. Yeah, and that's actually one thing with the the release that everyone's getting. Um, TechSmith has has found that there's a there's kind of a big gap of how people use video. And there's maybe people like you that have a little bit more um, you know, expertise in the area. You're comfortable with it. You're not intimidated by it. Um, but we found a lot of customers okay. were coming into TechSmith, trying out Camtasia, and were they didn't need all of that capability. They didn't need to be able to create that that kind of polished professional video. They just need something to quickly send out. You know, maybe a review of a, an email content or email format or something like that. Mm -hmm. But they didn't always get it perfect. Like they made a little mistake, they had a pop up come up in the middle of their the recording, and so this release we added kind of a lightweight editing capability so that you can cut out some little mistakes that you make or trim off the ends. So oh yeah, it's a real pain when you record that video and then you say um or uh or you you know you do something in the middle and you can restart it. So yeah, we yeah. had a, a goal to try to remove some of the anxiety and lower the barrier to entry for for video editing. So I'm getting a question. Sorry, I'm getting a question in from the field saying, "Is there an Ubuntu edition?" No, but um, it, no, but if they want to use, um, so Snagit, TechSmith.com, um, is not fully, uh, might not be fully responsive design. We we don't know for purposes of this uh, competition. If you want to go ahead and try that in mobile devices, if you don't have Windows or a Mac, uh, test on TechSmith.com, and I'm going to type that up right now into so. The other thing is, do we have access to a product owner is the question. That's this guy. So you've got him until he has to leave. So if you came early, get your questions in right now. Matt, we, uh, Jason here. Uh, I'm going to relay a question we have on the YouTube channel. One of the, uh, we have two questions coming in from the YouTube channel right now. What are the unique selling propositions features of this product? And what are the requirements and minimal, minimum viable feature set? That's a great question, and I'll let Jason answer it. So, the <coughs> viable feature set, and what was the other one? The value proposition? Okay, well, I'll let Jason answer. So, I'd say for. Um, At the moment, I'm muted. What was that? That was Mike speaking from the German. <laughs> uh, as far as min minimal viable product, um, Snag has been out for a, a number of years. It's version 12, the version that you guys have, and version 3 for Mac. Um, so if you're asking for a minimum viable product, Viable product for this release. Um, what that was was uh, the ability to not only record your screen, but also be able to remove little pieces of your video. So, so, so I, I should be able to cut out the ums or the uhs. Or does, does it do audio recording too? It yeah, does, right? It does. Yep. Does so, so if I've got some ums and some uhs and some pfft, oops, I could just go in and cut it out almost like you would for an audio tool. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, a lot of times, too, uh, people might have a section at the beginning or ends of their video that they were getting their windows in just the right place or they clicked a menu to get something going. Right, you had to remember how to, so what always gets me is I don't remember how to stop it so I have to go to preferences about stop and now I've got this weird end of it so, so you, know, you can cut that out. Exactly. So as a user of, of, of Snagit myself, I would say I've got to be able to do a screen capture, capture a window, capture an arbitrary window based on you know just dragging and dropping. Um, I've got to be able to annotate that so I can add the little arrows and the things, and make a video. That's that's what I really want to do. Yep, and I'd, right. I'd say that I'm not a power user. For the and, and that's really who we're you're tar we're targeting really with this release is to try to reach out to the new user, the one that's not necessarily comfortable with uh, working with either videos or images. So I gotta say that there's a lot of like, hey, do you want to learn stuff the first time you use it? Mm -hmm. That I don't find a ton of value in. So I don't know if that's. Like, it's like, do you want to learn stuff? Thing I got to click it. No, I don't. And and I got to remember. No, don't just click it. Click the. Net. Please don't talk to me anymore. But, you know, that's my. That's the Matt Hoiser. I want to get to value right now. 
and I know that if I learned some stuff, it'd be more powerful. That's just me talking. Yeah, and that, that's a, it's a mixed bag of uh, customers who have the time to learn some things up front. Um, we try to keep it to a minimum to where they're not overwhelmed with lots of training, but if they won't have access to it, that we'd give it to, to them. Okay, gentlemen, the questions are coming in rapid fire now, so I'm going to fire some more at you here. What is the goal of this testing, i.e. important bugs, release decision, support costs, lawsuits, etc.? And I'm going to combine that with another question that's on the same vein, which is, what are the top three things that your stakeholders care about, such as usability, security, etc.? Stakeholders being the customer or internally? Yeah, so this is this sells to what? What's the commercial? 20, 20 bucks a piece to 10,000, 100,000, lots of users. Yeah, I right. think we have 7 to 10 million users of Snagit. Um, so nice. <laughs> generally the stakeholder, um, I would say, would be me in that I try to take all those different inputs from across the, the world and build something that makes sense for all You're of them. You're the single ringable neck, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so I, I'd say what? people uh, care about the most from Snagit is uh, efficiency. They need to get their work done as quickly as possible, so I think that's important is performance. Are they able to do things uh, as, as fast as they need to and not have to wait for the software? So I think that's a key thing to be looking for um, because at the end of the day, Snagit is not a place you end up. It's a place that you're in along the way. So it's kind of a, a means to an end, not necessarily a, uh, an end state like you might have with uh, different types of software. Okay. Okay. Um, what are the new features of version 12? In version 12 and for 3, um, the video editing pieces that I mentioned uh, a second ago, being able to cut out sections of your video, uh, share it really, really quickly. Uh, that's a common thing with video editing. You tend to have a lot of production time at the end. And with this release, we focus on maintaining that speed of, of sharing as well, even if you're doing video editing. The other thing that uh, is probably the more significant change from a workflow standpoint is when you're taking a capture, you're not having to choose lots of things ahead of time. You're able to just start your capture, whether it's a, a hotkey or clicking the capture button, and make your selection of what you want to actually capture, and then choose if you want to do an image or video. So you're not having to. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily know for sure what oh, content so they want. It improves the it improves the workflow. Correct. You don't have to memorize two different hotkey That's combinations right. for different things. Yep. Nice. Exactly. So those are the two things that I think would be the most. Um, appropriate for everyone to look into. Um, and that's turtles all the way down, right? So that's like, what is the hotkey? Can you customize the hotkey? Yep. When you customize the hotkey, does it still work? Is that's there any right. usability issues around that? Yeah, I think that there, there still are the other ways to capture. So if you do want to just always do an image or a video, you can still, we wanted to maintain that same level of capability for existing customers. Um, but for new customers, we have another product called Jing that a lot of people transition from Jing to Snagit, and that workflow is completely different. So TechSmith is trying to unify the workflows across multiple uh, products in the portfolio. Right. Now, you've only got three hours to test. Strictly speaking, we shouldn't be testing until 6.30, but... Um, okay. But, but, uh, but it, it, in that time, if you wanted to, you could go to... Correct me if I'm wrong. If you had an extra computer around, mm -hmm. you could go to TechSmith.com and download the current... You could convert 11.x. Mm -hmm. And you could run them side by side, and you could see if, as a user, gosh, I, I didn't. Maybe it's not a bug, but I, it's different, and I'm confused. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. you could file that as a usability issue, and I, I think these guys would be interested in that. Absolutely, and that, that is something that, um, you know, even even something as simple as the background color of the Snagit editor. That is something we improve, not arbitrarily, but to bring focus to your content. So when you're taking a capture, you don't want to be bombarded with the tool. You want to see your content. And so that would be a, sh a change you'd notice from version 11 to version 12, where we bring more um, focus to your content as opposed to the tool itself. Now, we did have a question earlier about what's the purpose of this testing. Um, and, and I'm going to take, I, I think that we're accountable to you for the results, but I'm going to take some, some ownership of of that part, so correct me if I'm wrong, right? But this is a pre-release of the software. So if you find what you believe is a showstopper, like you guys better fix this before it goes live, 
that would kind of be important. <laughs> Um, if you and the, so, the, and one of the deliverables is a test report. And the test report, there's lots of ways you can ask questions about. There's lots of ways to structure a test report, but it should be something that's not going to put an executive to sleep, where they can get their information very, very quickly. And if they have time, they can dig in deeper and find out more. So, and I, I hate to interrupt you again, Matt, but I'm at least two pages behind in asking you guys questions. I, 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 <laughs> we're doing the best we can. I know. Yeah. I, I, this has got to be an answer sooner or later. But, but yeah. Oh, I know. Pick your favorites. Um, put it that way. Pick my favorites. What bugs in production? In 30 seconds or less, what bugs in production in the past have cost money slash loss of retention? Nice. Um, I'm not aware of any that have caused any legal action. Um, bugs that I'd say that are detrimental is when someone's paid for the software and then we give them an update or something, some other way that they're re-interacting with the software, and Snagit thinks that they're not a paid customer. So you've entered a key, uh, something, a bug existed, where you come back into the software and it would think that you weren't a paid customer. So that was a tremendous uh, customer service and, you know, not a very uh, great thing for a customer by any means. So that would be an example of one where, uh, another one would be lost data. So if you've taken a video or a capture and, um, it was super, very mission critical information, and for whatever reason that captured uh, was corrupted or lost. Uh, that would be an example of something that's extremely important uh, to TechSmith. Okay, uh, there's been a lot of, there's quite a few questions in here um, about the uh, uh, scope of testing. Um, some people questioning, uh, asking about how many platforms do they need to test on. Um, that kind of thing. Yeah, I would think we'd get one or the other. So I don't, I'm not expecting you to have a Windows machine and a Mac machine side by side and split your time in half. I just pick one and go with it. Yeah, I would say if 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 you're looking for the representation of the the market, uh, the Windows platform is by far the the larger user community. But both are, both are use we develop for the this for both platforms on the same team. So yeah, we just provided the Mac version. So if you have a Mac, you're not hosed. Okay. Uh, one of the uh, a question that's near and dear to my heart is somebody asked where they can find the logs for Snagit. Are there logs? I guess it depends on the level of the logs. There are um, some logs that can be generated um, that our tech support team generates, but I wouldn't. It's generally not something. Just you know, get you know any magic tricks for backend mm -hmm. stuff to get to kick out a text file. No, nope. Me. Sorry. I know our tech support team has it. I don't. Wait, have let it me on ask. Let head. me ask. Is there uh, any backend reporting that's happening? Is it sending stuff back? Oh my God. Could, so, so you could use Wireshark to capture that. It, it, we do have uh, <laughs> right? about basically uh, about ten percent of users, if they are selected <laughs> to be opted in for some non-personally identifiable uh, tracking. It's purely for a, a method for determining usage and understanding if people are finding the value in the product. Can they opt in if they want to? Is there something they can click in the preferences? They can, they can opt out if they'd like. Oh, okay. So opt in or out. It does default you as in. Okay. So you're among in. that sample, we take about 10% and actually report those. So you could, you could surf Wireshark, but that's probably not the best use of your time. We got three out. Right. Excellent. Uh, one of the questions was, is the UAT... Test, uh, targeted for this application, and I'm going to let you interpret what that means. So acceptance tests, well, maybe? Yeah, that's, acceptance that's usually more for internal company software where you've got a big, like your steel case or something, and you've got your own users who are your own employees or your customer service reps. And I just don't think that there's, I don't think you guys do that kind of thing. Or do you? We, we, have, we certainly haven't, you know, we, what we define is what are the problems we're trying to solve, and then have user stories that say what needs to be true for this thing to... to uh, but you don't, you don't in, for instance, bring in a half dozen gen general Snagit users, people like me, right? You don't bring those guys in and say, um, hey, you regular Snagit users, sit down here, we'll pay you 10 bucks an hour for a week to test. Yeah. Not, it's not part of your strategy. Not for that purpose, no. Excellent. Um, is there anything out of scope for this testing? 
And that's what I'm aware of. Well, um, even even anything from installing to uninstalling, I think would be, you know, a very good use of time because we have a lot of um, just a sheer number of users with different environments and setups and everything where we can't always account and have coverage for every test environment. But. Testing on Linux under Mono or another framework that emulates Windows probably out of scope. I would agree. But a virtual environment like a, a Hyper-V or AppV or something like that, that kind of environment would certainly, would certainly be appropriate and hmm. interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right. Are there any limitations to the size of the videos that can be recorded? There are limitations in terms of terms of dimensions. I believe it's 1920 by 1080. Off the top of my head. Nice. There's a there, there's a I good think, equivalence class uh, for you. In terms of length, there isn't a, a limit. Although I, I, given the three hour limit, I would say um, that's not necessarily represented by our user base either. They tend to make shorter videos, quicker videos, so. But that would be the only limitation. And your hard drive size. So if you have a hard drive that's got less than you know a gigabyte free, um, that would be a limitation, I, I guess, as well. We have what happens when your hard drive runs out of space? What should happen when your hard drive runs out of space? Uh, there's a limiter that's inside Snagit that would check to see. I think if you have under two gigabytes, we'll tell you, hey, are you sure you want to do this before we let you do it? If you okay. run out, though, that's up to the OS. That's we, we typically we give you the warning to keep you from hopefully making a mistake, but if you decide to. So Raj Sub Submarinian is asking if there are unit test results. Um, Jess, do they do, they do TDD or there are unit tests that run? Is it all green? <laughs> there are some unit tests that are run for very specific areas of the product, um, but I, I don't think it'd be anything that would be reportable by uh, the end user or the tester. Yeah. So. I'll, for instance, around the keys, how the keys work, that's super, very, very important, is when someone enters a key, we want it to work. Um, so we have a lot of testing around that, but it's very targeted. That's an interesting question. Excellent. Um, another quick one. Uh, does Snagit support multiple instances of capture, i.e., can I capture two videos at the same time or take a snapshot while a video is being recorded? Did you say that one more I'm time? Sorry, I'm sorry, I missed that. I was talking. Can you capture two videos at the same time? Um, no, you cannot. You probably can't run two instances of it at the same time That's either. That's also correct. Because yeah. it would, yeah, it would, that'd be bad. Yeah. And then there was a request, request, I gotta find it here, for a test key. Where did that, where did that go? Do we have access to a test key? I think it's under the license. Is that, is yeah. they want to test the licensing process? That's my guess. Yeah, I would say that would be one thing that would be out of scope. We did not plan yeah. for non-trial usage for the, the World Cup. Next year. Sorry, I'm just quickly scanning these. There's <laughs> I'm only My 19 idea. seconds behind, and I'm like 20 seconds, uh, like two pages behind, so. There are some questions regarding the target audience, uh, target market, business professionals, students. Um, did you already cover that? Uh, we, we did briefly, but I, I can speak to it really quickly. Um, I'd say if, if there's one key target role, um, people that do training or documentation tend to use Snagit a lot. Um, but I think we, we target IT uh, areas. People use it for testing uh, a lot. You know, our own teams use Snagit for our testing of Snagit. Um, that's a, certainly a key role. Um, as far as markets, I mean, we, we do target IT, sales, marketing, um, legal, healthcare. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we have multiple millions of users, so we, we do find that we uh, reach a lot of different markets. But in terms of users, I think people are creating content to share with others, uh, knowledge workers. Uh, it's, it is generally uh, not as specific. What should they expect for multi-monitor support? Uh, you can expect that uh, image capture would work on multiple monitors. Video capture is limited to re recording on a single monitor, not across monitors for lots of DPI-related issues. That would certainly be an area to focus is different d DPIs across different monitors. Uh, that is an area that we've had uh, with Windows 8.1 especially, they've exposed 
a lot more of the DPI re resolution, where that used to be a much more obscure feature. Uh, but as far as multiple monitors, if you go beyond three monitors, uh, performance tends to uh, diminish for sure. Um, but I would say you know multiple monitor support is there. Okay. Do you have more features in a more expensive version, or does the uh, version they have uh, have all the available features? Uh, the version they have is fully featured in the trial. Okay. What languages need to be supported? Uh, for the build that you have English only. And Sir Raj, Raj Raj's question uh, is it's dot it's, it's dot net, right? C++. Uh, it's a mixed environment. It has some C++ and .NET uh, well, for, for Windows. Manage C++ or whatever. But yeah. yeah, there's there's both, actually. There's native MFC, C++. Old school. Yep. Yeah, as awesome. I mentioned, Saget was started in, I think, 1991. So it's been around for a while. Um, a question about accessibility. Um, how much accessibility uh, interface layer testing should they do? How much should they do? That's kind of a hard question. Do they care about it? Um, we, we definitely have a... I'd say TechSmith has had a bigger focus on the content we're sharing being accessible so that, for instance, Snagit does not have this capability, but for other products that we have, having captioning and things like that so that it's uh, viewable as an accessible piece of content. Um, but I would say, you know, that it would... It would be a worthy test of, of Snagit. We do have, uh, I think it's the BPAT document, which outlines your overall um, view of your uh, accessibility qualifications. Um, because it is a largely visual tool where you're dealing with images and videos a lot, uh, that tends to be less accessible from that perspective. But purely, you know, having accelerators on menus and, and uh, windows and things like that, that's something we expect to be working as, as you, you'd think. Performance testing benchmark. That's an interesting question. I have an opinion, but I, I, I don't own the software. Um, I guess we have different views of performance. At the end of the day, uh, we, we tend to look at um, our minimum system requirements as that benchmark. And so for this, that would be a, a machine with one gigabyte of RAM, um, 300 megabytes of hard drive space, and a CPU that I believe is a Core 2 Duo. Uh, well, let me ask you. Let's say I have that on a 15-inch monitor, mm -hmm. and I try to record a video that is full screen with lots of colors, yep. and then I export it with something, and it's a one-minute video. How long should that export take? Uh, the export should take... 10 to 12 seconds, probably. Okay. That's not that bad. very fast. Because Camtasia is, is not, 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 not really fast. No, it's, yeah, and they, they have a much more elaborate method of making sure you are you have very little loss in your video. Snag so is, is much more about the quick capture. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the speed at which you share should be quick. If you are recording, like, a YouTube video or something, you're not supposed to be, like, Netflix or Hulu, or something like that, um, you would expect choppier videos because you're not um, capturing at the same frame rate as the So we got the question about testing the installation and deletion process, and I know that we don't have straight priorities, one, two, three, but you did mention that you were interested in that, that results. Yeah. yeah, I would. I think, I think the, the priorities that we've articulated so far is um, the new ability to edit a video, core functionality, and then Install and delete. Yeah, we did sure. actually redesign the installer for this release to be a much more streamlined process and two clicks installing it. But there are advanced ways to install, and so we did test those. And uh, you know, as as part of the redesign, it would be interesting. To know. Um, somebody's asked. You mentioned a mobile version earlier. Is it accessible for tonight's uh, testing? So the mobile version that I was speaking about was if you do not have Windows and you do not have a Mac and you want to do something for this competition, explore TechSmith.com with a mobile device. It's only if you simply can't. You've got you've got Linux in your Android phone. That's all you've got. You want to play. It does look like Graham. I asked a question about TechSmith Fuse. So that is a, a mobile integration we have with Snagit and Camtasia, but. That would absolutely be in the scope of this of this testing. Is in scope. Yes. Is in yep. scope. Yep. And that's a free download on the 
iOS or uh, Android, Android uh, Google Play Store. This guy isn't one of your employees or anything, right? I just saw his name. <laughs> Okay, so that's a good question. Uh, judges, if you could, I think that would be borderline bonus point. Uh, yeah. We have, so the way this works is you can earn 100 points per judge and up to five bonus points. And that's mostly based on good questions, um, um, demonstrated teamwork, those kind of things that just aren't really in the, like, we don't have a way of giving you bonuses, but you did. So if you ask a really good question, everybody else that listens gets the answer. So we want to help you in some way. So great, great question. You know, what, one comment I would make, Matt, is too. We we did have a new release of Fuse for iOS come out this week, actually. Yeah, so I would say for Fuse, iOS and Android would yep. be Android. Uh, I think came out as well. The point of that is to get content. So the use case for that, or the the persona for that, would be uh, people that are trying to get real world content into their uh, into their Snagit, and that's that's the the goal behind Texo Fuse. Um, another should be another really quick one. Uh, is the Snagit info page and tutorial part of the in-scope testing? Did you ask if you could use the tutorial? Uh, no, it's like, can they test the tutorial? Can they say, hey, I ran through everything in the tutorial and the screen looks different, or there's a, it's it's not right. This button in the tutorial is not in the actual. Right. Yeah. There's. I mean, if you're talking about the in product help, I think yeah. If you if you notice that the help file doesn't reflect what the software actually does, that would be appropriate. Um, there are other in product onboarding tutorials that, um, if they aren't clear, if you're confused by them, they don't actually help you. Um, that's somewhat of a subjective bug, but it's definitely something that we think is important. So does this latest release support video slicing to join two videos? Did you say release? No, no, no. The, the latest release. Latest release. Okay. Video splicing. You make one video, you make another video, you cut and paste. Oh, no, that's not in this release. No. You can do that with Camtasia. You can make multiple cuts from any part of your single video, but uh, the videos are independent. Um, sir, I'm skipping over some. Some of these questions are that that are here are things. I think they should answer in testing as opposed to asking, so I've been skipping them. Um, yeah. Things like, what if I have one or more tools like QuickTime Player open open along with Snagit? Hmm. Great test case. Does Snagit capture a screenshot of it? That, that sounds interesting. Tell us what you find. <laughs> yeah, it know. sounds recursive <laughs> to me, right? Like it sounds. I don't know if you, you guys saw this earlier, but uh, where is it? Screen share? Yeah. Uh, so like, you could probably do something like that <laughs> if you have Snagit running it. Right? Um, you still wow. got screen share on. How do I turn it off? How do I turn it again? Track me notes. Okay. Um, so don't. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what you can do with that. I don't know that we're really too worried about it. Like, you tried to record two different things at the same time and it got weird. What a surprise! Yeah. Right. So the video files that uh, Snagit makes, what are their uh, so what are the currently supported export types? Uh, exporting to MP4 is what we chose to do with with Snagit. Uh, it's kind of broadly considered the more you know universal file format, so that that's the that is the export format. It's MP4 with the H.264. So so two, two interesting two questions I'm interested in is what's use transparency and um. If they find real showstoppers, can this actually stop release to production? Is this really a, is this really a release candidate, or is the train already left the station? Uh, it's, I'd say it's beyond. I mean, we have the ability to release an update within days if there was a. But if it was truly a showstopper, we would stop the show. Yeah, but I think we got some serious confidence that, that there's not any showstoppers in there, but. Yeah, I mean, we make your case. Quality is is key to TechSmith. I mean, it's the and holy crow, I almost caught up, and I'm going to read one word for word because um, it's really long and detailed, and I don't want to miss anything. Could you tell us what is the expectation for software update to the latest version from older version? Should it be removing software before installing the new one, or should it be making patches over the old software? How is uh, how important is that in today's testing exercise? 
Um, the, for, the, for today's test, I don't think that would be uh, very applicable in that. So the way it does work, just so you know, um, if you're going from a version 11, let's say, to version 12, which is a paid upgrade, Snagit would be installed, installed side by side. So you can't have them both installed at the same time. Um, the update process within the family, so if you're saying within Snagit 12 to version 12.01 or 12.1, which don't exist, um, that would install over top. So you're you're getting a new MSI, which is actually the, the installer that is installed on top of the, the original version. So in that case, you would just be it's not actually a patch because there are Microsoft patches, but it is essentially patching the original install, uh, but not not technically to that term. But for this test, if you do want to install version 11 and then install version 12 as a quasi test, so you're simulating the update, um, we do want to know about how the two coexist. So that would certainly be within the scope. But the actual update mechanism. Uh, would not be appropriate for this test. Is Windows XP not supported? Windows XP is not supported for version 12. <laughs> um, that actually brings me to, to the top of the comments list. And I know I skipped over some, uh, some of which was because we had answered them earlier, and some of which was because they were more test case, uh, suggested test cases. Um, mm -hmm. But Matt, um, Mike just pointed out that we have five minutes left before testing is supposed to start. So it's probably a perfect time for you to talk a little bit about process. Yeah, I answered that one. Oh, oh so um, you mean me? Talk about process, like what, what it needs to do next? So you got it. We finish the meet and greet, you download the software, you've installed the software, you start testing the software. You can use whatever methods you want. You can ask us and come up with whatever strategy you want. You can use exploratory, you can create your own charters, you can do, you can write test cases. I don't care. Surprise us. No, no, yeah, you can you can use Selenium and no, you can't use Selenium. You can use you can use uh, Telerik or any other GUI-based tool and create automated tests. If you want, if you think that's the best use of your time in the next three hours, um, then you're gonna find bugs and you're gonna file them in the bug tracker. And you should have an email and you should have a video about how to record bugs in Agile Manager. Um, and I'm I'm hoping people start filing bugs and telling us right here. That you filed it, and you know we can go look and check and make sure everything's good very early in the process. Um, you file it under your team name so you get credit for it, and then toward the end of the three hours, this is going to be officially over at 9:30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time, 9:30 p.m. GMT minus four. At that time, and I'll I'll give you a warning. So if, so if you're watching the video, I'll say, hey, we got an hour left. You've got to, you've got to email in. Um, your test report, and I can we'll talk more about the test report when when when, when it's just us testers. The email in your test report is probably a Word doc, maybe, um, could be a Google doc. You to um, an email address, which you should have the email address in. Should have already been told it. We'll, we'll, we'll list it again, and, uh, and that's it. The important thing is to get done by 9:30 Eastern daylight daylight savings because. Your your score will drop precipitously if you turn in your test report late. The later you are, the worse. For three minutes late, I don't care, right? If you're just trying to fit type, I don't care. But go ahead. I was going to ask if uh, you, you mentioned sending out the the ability to capture Snagit with Snagit. I think if we we because we find bugs, you guys find bugs. One thing we value at TechSmith a lot is actually seeing the bug and not just seeing a 18-step uh, list of the steps to get the bug. Those That's good, too. Um, but seeing it in action or seeing a screenshot of what you're seeing um, is super valuable as well. So it's just a suggestion. So I, so required, just a request. There's, there's an ability to attach your bugs, uh, attach images to every single bug you file. So when you file a bug, attaching an image, a picture's worth a thousand words. It's just a good idea. Use Snagit for that. You can, you can. And you gotta watch, you got to read the email about how to do that. But, yeah, you can do that. Um, when we get to the, the report, if there are a few key bugs that you think tell you something about the software and you want to include pictures, that's fine in your report. You want to include a mind map, that's fine. If you want to, like, 
you know, like I mentioned before, at the beginning, you probably say this is overall status. Then this is why we think that's the overall status. Then this is the test strategy or maybe more bugs. This is the test strategy we pursued. This is why we pursued it. That's sort of the classic test report. But you've got three hours to do all the testing, all the filing, any artifacts you're going to create and email us, and the bug report. So um, it's time. Go ahead, test. I'll be here, and we'll have these guys as long as we have these guys. This, I know that I, I promised to stay till 6.30, and it's 6.30, so... Because you've got to get home to the wife or something. Family. I understand. So the, uh, the, there is one more question that came in that it would be good to get him to answer before he leaves. And it's, uh, I skipped over it earlier, but it's come up again, so I'm going to make sure I ask it. Are they allowed to submit feature enhancement requests, change requests, in addition to defects? Well, if it's usability, if it's direct usability, if it's, I was confused, I would almost call that a bug. What, for new features? Um, I, yeah, we absolutely think that would be, I, whether it counts towards the, the actual competition, um, not for me to say, uh, but if you think there are things that Snag is missing or things that can make it better um, for your job or for a job that you think would be Snag. Then certainly so, so I can't speak for all the North American judges, but at this point I would say if you were doing it for me and there were a couple of them and they were really good ideas, I would count uh, that. That would be interesting to me as a judge. If there were a ton of them and they were all like weird, crazy stuff, you know, yeah, I think things that things that are really more businessy, like you need to export to or Borbis format. Right. I, I would say that that's actually a great point because the things that we're focusing on is not the the esoteric used by four people in the world kind of features. There, we make software that's used by all types of people. So I think that you're absolutely right. Something that's appropriate for a lot large community to be certainly more valuable. But usability, we, we treat usability issues similar to bugs, at least on our team. I'm not saying again for the competition, but um, certainly we try to treat those and triage them just like we triage a normal crash or something like that. Great. How long can you guys stick around? That's, it's 6.33, and I, I don't want to overly abuse you. I'd be, I'd be willing to stick around for a bit, once, especially if... There's some initial... Yeah, we get the first couple of bugs in. Yeah, yeah. see if there's any problems popping up. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and do testing, and I'd love to file, file, um, file comments when you guys find bugs. Is there, we'll like, uh, extra points for the first bug filed, or are they all at the end, right? So it's, all, it's, it's at the end, but, okay. but, you know, very first one, we might yeah, see like, you bonus yeah. point. Okay, um... Uh, not to interrupt you, Matt, but I know Jason does need to go, and there was one question here that he should probably answer before it goes, before he goes. Uh, as a new user, I don't see how to use the FF auto scroll feature. Do I have to use an external application, or is there a menu item I'm missing? For, that? For Windows or Mac? Or? Uh, they don't specify what. Uh, platform at all. When you start a capture, um, not to, hopefully this will be good usability feedback. Um, when you start a capture, though, if you are moving your mouse around, you'll see some crosshairs that are on the screen. Um, if you're over a scrollable area, there's actually a little square button with an arrow on it, whether it be in the lower, the bottom of your window or the corner uh, or the side. Um, if you click on that button, uh, it will actually start the scrolling capture for you. So there's nothing else to install, uh, at least on the Windows side. The Mac side does have a component that can be opened and installed. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm on a Mac, but so we can't demo it. We can still show you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's 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 find a new window that something big. A lot of search results. So what I'm trying to do is trying to show you the feature that we're talking about. While well, we've got Jason here. Should I search for World Cup? Should be lots of results. Should have to scroll, right? So I want to capture this whole page. And capture. Actually, from that. This is mostly this is just the, the previous editor. version, yeah. right? Well, even even with this, it would be fine. But if you click the 
hold a camera up there to start a capture. That's how you start. New image. Yep. And here's the crosshairs, and we go click. Yeah, so actually, if you, it looks like for, you probably don't have the. Are you on 10.9? I'm not sure, but I don't think I've downloaded the component. We'll try it. Try to start another capture. Okay. Start. <laughs> New image. Let's try moving the mouse around to a different part of the screen. Maybe. So let's see if there's another window. So there you go. There's the button right there. Capture entire. <laughs> so there's a bug for you. Entire what? Entire, entire screen. That's what it says. Unable to capture. Yeah. So for, for Firefox, there was an install extension. But the point the, the point there is that when we go with the crosshairs, we can bring up this, and this is capture entire screen. That's right. Which for PCs should just work, and for Macs, which I have, you have to install. Some and that that button it will look different in version 12. We we redesigned that button, but that would well, that's where you'd look for the scrolling capture feature. It's a different three now. It's a different three. Uh, Mac would also look different. Yeah, this is, it's a black button with the orange um, border in the middle part. The layer. So I'm going to get um, The bugs appear to be coming in fast and furious. Mike says we've got 35 logged already. According to YouTube, it's somewhere up around 51. So I, I don't. I suppose that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm gonna check. I'm gonna I'm gonna log in to to Pronk, um, to HP Agile Manager and see if I can see some of these bugs myself. Last time I checked, I didn't have access yeah. to the projects for the 44 teams, but yeah. it may just be I'm misunderstanding something. While you're doing that, Jason, where are the it, it captured images stored? <clears throat> yeah. Captured images are stored for Windows under your user. App data local TechSmith folder. Um, so it's essentially not just the capture, but we also capture metadata about um, for late for you for later on. Um, so like if you captured from Chrome, we would know which application you are capturing from. So I'm just mentioning that because the all that metadata is stored in that same location in a SQL database. And that, again, that's not that nothing. None of that is sent to TechSmith. It's purely for in the library feature of Snagit. You can quickly find your old captures based on that metadata. Uh, but that would be a Windows only thing. For the Mac side, uh, the captures are stored under your user folder. Uh, I believe it's under just Documents and then TechSmith and then Snagit. And then there's a folder called Auto Saved Captures. Um, in the Mac side, you, you can access that folder and change the location. Uh, on the Windows side, it is a static location. You cannot change it. So, Mike, when you log in to Agile Manager, did you just see all the bugs listed? Mike? You log into Agile Manager. Um, yes, um, because the judges are seeing all registered teams. So yeah, I don't, and, uh, I don't, I don't think my, I don't think my regular Matt Hoiser login has that. You got to get me that. Or or I think I think the security risk is low enough if I can get somebody else's login. If you select defect management from the drop list, you should see it. I do not. I'm in defect management. Uh. I think I'm just not configured. Because I requested my own account some time ago to get everything set up, and you guys were automatically created, right? I think I'm, I'm different. Yeah, I don't see, I don't see uh, any defects other than the one I created myself either. Yeah. Did you check if you're at launch of the uh, MyPronk website? If you registered with the right tenant, uh, maybe. What do I have to do to do that? Um, can you? Can I share my screen somehow? I never yeah. tried that out. Sure. 
If you hover your mouse over the left edge of your hangout, the okay. second icon down is a green square with an arrow. Okay. Okay, can you see it? Yes. So on here, on this, my prompt side, mm -hmm. on your name, like I registered a trial version before as well, so that is the standard selection. And here is the uh, American instance ah. created. So, and then after you selected it, you click launch, you get a new site, yep. and then you get all teams. I think that's it. So I've got two different HP Agile managers. I've got the Exelon development instance, which is a trial, and then they created one for me for that user, which is hopefully the World Cup. Oops, there I am. The defect management. There they are. No, mine's erroring out. Let's look at this. Um, what's, oh, it's a it's an MP4. Man, you can't just play it. To minimize some stuff. I have no idea what we're looking at. He's, he's, like he's, he's, he's in paint. He's filling. No, it looks like it's saying it. No, I don't think it's ever confused. I don't think he filled black. He's doing that. So he filled and then filled to the black and it has a lot of strange brown left over. Okay. So that's not that's not like I wouldn't really that's not that wouldn't class it. It's, it's based on the tolerance of the fill. It's how much it's going to fill in the patches. Where was that? Was that color filled where's where's the description of it though? Where's the few details that's what we want? Come again, what was the question? Oh, okay, yeah, so that's better. I'm looking at, um, is there a way to get the number here? I'm looking at a particular defect. Okay. Color filled to black, it's on black, destroy picture. And I'm, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't know what this means, really. I mean, I guess as a product expert, you might be able to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. That, even our own internal team sometimes have a... <laughs> Interesting ways of describing what they actually see. So I'm looking at I, uh, a defect ID 34 right now is what I'm looking at. The other thing we should check to see is if those are assigned to teams properly. I'm going to do that right now. Because if the bugs aren't assigned to teams properly, we'll have a problem. Uh, oh yeah, right. So you select under application your team name, and um, that's all we need. Cool, sweet. Anything in particular you want to look at, Jason? Do they mention that's severity? That's interesting. We can sort by severity. Yeah. Oh, so there's some there's some criticals here. Oh, one thing we should mention. This is very important. Um, I'm not sure if we we shared this. The in-product links, so if you click buy now, or order now, or learn more, or any kind of link that takes you to the internet, none of that is published currently, so uh, that would be a thing I'd say you should avoid. I apologize for not mentioning that mm. scope question, but um, basically those are all redirects that point to our TechSmith servers, Yeah. but in the pre-release version, they're all uh, essentially well, placeholders, broken links. Because, you can't uh, buy it, yeah. So you can't buy it, you can't get to the training. So I'd say if you want to avoid bugs like that, that for this it wouldn't be appropriate. Scope change. Thanks Sorry. for watching. Sorry about that. Hopefully there's still lots. We're, we're trying to simulate a real software development project here. Yeah.
our, when we send out bills to our company, we have to remind everyone of that too. Because we we'll forget everyone on our side. Mm. Snag it editor not responding when sharing with Google Drive. Stop it, stop it. I'm looking at ID number 40. An editor shared the video by Google Drive. That's really interesting. It looks like it responds, but after a long time. That is an area of Snagit that we've had instability in certain cases. So. I think one of the challenges can be there is the way that Google publishes their changes. Just all of a sudden they're there, you know, and then software's got to be able to react with them. Do you want to? Do we want to talk maybe about Monday, Tuesday, next week, having you look at these defects and have you tell us just? I mean, not a huge invest in the time, which is, <laughs> I found these defects really valuable. I mean, I think you'd want to look at them anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure. I okay. Mean, this is about as real of a test as we can get, for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, so we'll, them, we'll try to find some way to get real feedback from the stakeholder about the, the value of the um, defects found. Yeah, typically when we yeah. triage them, we, we weigh, uh, you know, the... I guess the ubiquity of the problem or the pervasiveness of the problem um, against what the, the value is of that particular part of the product. So but crashes usually are not good in any part of the product, obviously. But yeah, I think it certainly would be nice to see the details. Um, Jason, hey, I'll let you in. coming in. Jason, I'll talk to you about this on Skype. Yeah. Um, for hotkeys, do we want to focus more on the application's hotkeys, or are the system hotkeys equally important? Print, screen, copy, paste, etc. Um, we do use print screen as the default hotkey for capturing, so um, if you assign a hotkey inside of Snagit, that's a, an additional system hotkey that would be appropriate. But hotkeys in general for Snagit would be a very good thing to be testing. As far as built-in system capabilities with those kind of things, uh, contr like Control-C, Control-V within Snagit, certainly that's a, a functional part of the product that should be tested. Um, there's There seems to be quite a few questions in the YouTube blog about adding attachments in HP Agile Manager. Uh, some people are reporting that they don't always have the attachment option listed. Well, let's go into Agile Manager then and see what we can see. Yeah, thanks for coming, Jess. Yeah. See you tomorrow. So let's try to create... I'm going to try to create a defect in Agile Manager and see what... Uh, what uh, what browser are they using? Because it's working for me in Chrome on a Mac. I don't know. I don't know. Highland Software. Which uh, browser are you guys using? Let's talk to Eric. Forgive my typing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so um, I am available on Skype if you can find me and you can add me. Yeah. We've got 44 users. Oh yeah, if you want to talk too. But um, we got 44 teams. Please don't do more than one person per team talking to me on Skype. Sorry. Um, no, you can. It'd be great, if, Jason. If you want to go home and, and get on the, get online or whatever, if you have time. Um, yeah, last year we had physically distributed product owners and people mm -hmm. talking by Skype. We only had 17 teams, so this is a lot more manageable. Are there multiple rounds to the? Yeah, this is the great part. So we're going to have one per continent. There is no. Antarctica continent. 
but it's the six continents, uh, Australia and New Zealand together, call it Oceana, Oceana. Um, India, uh, Asia, it's all Asia. The subcontinent, Pakistan, it's all Asia. The winners of each continent round get a ticket to Agile Testing Days in Germany to four people. They get hotel nights for four or five nights, it's a lot. They get airfare for up to some reasonable maximum amount in euros. And they fly to Europe, and then we have the world competition in Germany in November. And we are extending one free ticket to actual testing days to TechSmith um, right. for giving us the software under tech. Uh, and, and hopefully we'll do a couple of, maybe a couple of continents with different products you guys have. Listened. But um, And the winner of the world competition gets 3,000 euros to split as a team. It's about 4,500 US dollars. So if you're a two-person team, that's all right. <laughs> right. You're good. If you're a four-person team, it still beats the poke in the eye with the sharp stick. Is the stick. second round also three hours, or is it different? Uh, it'll be very similar, mm -hmm. but we're going to be everybody together in the same room. Oh, wild card round. Wild card round. If you're going to Agile Testing Days, come in a day early, and we're going to have another competition the day before Agile Testing Days in Germany in November for to represent Antarctica. So so if you, if you lose out, go to Agile Testing Days anyway. Come the day before and we'll have a, a burn down race down for a wild card slot at the, at the international competition. So, uh, um, well, it looks like Highland has uh, responded back that they're saying IE 10 seems to be the one that's not working. That is interesting. So, don't use IE 10 for Agile Manager and file a bug against Agile Manager. And we're considering giving you a bonus point. But that wasn't really testing. That was just like, well, ah, what happened? So I don't know. Our next round, we'll be testing Agile Manager using Agile Manager. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there are many bugs there, but apparently there's at least one. Excellent. Um, well, so uh, there's a question in the vlog here, and I'll ask it anyway. Well, I've asked the team for clarifi clarification on. Their, uh, their question, which is, is high memory, is the high memory use case a priority? So you're saying that, like, we've got a lot of applications running and a lot of memory is being used up and we run a long video that takes up a lot of memory and what happens? Um, certainly if, if Snagit's utilizing a lot of memory, um, that would certainly be uh, pro you know, valid to, to report. Um, its performance in the environment of having a little bit of memory. Uh, I mean, we, we do have a general system, what we deem as the minimum system requirement of one gigabyte free, uh, or in your system, sorry, not free. Uh, but, yeah, I think that would be appropriate. Just to know, Snagit works with a lot of other applications at the same time, so knowing how it behaves when there's a lot of things running would be good to know. Okay, we're, we have a bit of a, a lull in the questions here, so I'm going to take a quick bio break, and I'll be back to ask these gentlemen more questions as the competitors uh, fire them at us. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, having done this last year, if you watch the video, which is up on YouTube of me last year, there's a lot of time where I'm going, um, mm. it's just sort of this natural low. So with 44 teams, I think we'll have less of that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, feel free to ask your questions. Why don't we check out Twitter to see if anything interesting is happening on Twitter? For this, this SWC 2014 hashtag, right? Probably no one is tweeting it off if they're obviously testing. So 
So HP is tweeting about us, which is cool. And Mike is... Yeah, I think most people are actually um, actually busy filing bugs, which is probably how it should be. Probably how it should be. So let's see. It. Let's refresh Agile Manager and see if how many bugs are in here now. We are on 102. 102. Nice. You can get it in the status bar at the bottom. I'm going to go find defect number one. There you go. How come I can't go above 29? There. It seems odd. Hey, any other judges? Can you guys go find a defect earlier than 29? No, I haven't. I assume the people tried out their login and did some test. That's odd. Hey, Damien, come on down. How do you pronounce your last name, Damien? Sinadinos. Sinadinos. That's correct. This is Damien Sinadinos. Let's see if we can get the... I can't get you. Grab my glasses here. Damien Sinidios is a test manager at, can I say the name of your company? Sure. Huntington. Huntington? Right. In Columbus, Cle Columbus Ohio. Ohio. Sure. He's driving up for the Lean Software Delivery tutorial we're doing tomorrow, but he just happens to be here, and I don't like being, like, I don't like to eat a bagel alone. So I said, hey, drop on by. I'm Damien. I'm Jason. Nice to meet you, Jason. What's Jason's last name? Right? Eagles. Jason Eagleston is the product owner of Snagit, which is the product that we're testing cool. for the World Cup for North America to qualify for the Worlds. <laughs> Excellent. And we just hit the lull, right? So we just hit... Um, people are probably busy actually testing right now, which is good. Um, is this a team? Or was there a team over here earlier? No, no. Those were actually NBA students. I think I had to... I'm trying to make a joke. How long is the MIT School of Business? I have not. It's broad. Broad Eli, is Eli Broad, Eli broad is is um, is uh, is Michigan State University. We're about about a mile to mile. We're close to Michigan State University. I asked the folks. Here's a question from YouTube: Who do you consider competitors for a Snagit? Competitors, uh, in terms of just the functionality, certainly the built-in tools. So, um, print screen on Windows. Command Shift Four on Mac. Yep, the grab tool. Um, I would say it keeps getting better. The sniffing tool is also a built-in tool that people use a lot. Um, on Windows, there's also a uh, green shot, get one print screen. Uh, Mac Sketch certainly uh, does a lot of the same functionality, although we tend to focus on a more uh, corporate you know, business uh, end user. Sketch on uh, Mac also there's Little Snapper. Voila. 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 That's how I pronounce it. I'm sure that's I'm sure that's right. It's just kind of funny. It's got the accent. Or as I would say, Voila. <laughs> for those who don't know my reputation for misinterpreting names, mispronouncing is um I wouldn't say legendary. People know that I do that. It's kind of funny. Yeah, for the, the everyday uh, customer that uh, does wants to do some of the basics of what Snagit does. They, they tend to use just print screen and paint a lot. Um, uh, we believe that we make that for someone that's using this every day uh, a lot more smooth and hopefully efficient, but uh, certainly use whatever you think is appropriate. So, great question. Great question. No way to disable scrolling an application. Well, that's interesting. Are these bug reports coming in? These bug reports. This is cool. I've not read a lot about this either. I just scanned the, uh, the website a little bit today just to get an idea. Joe is a judge as well. Joe Hours, I believe, right? Yes, but he's like he's going to judge next week. Yes. He's got to go burn down through thousands of bug reports. But he's not available today, if I'm I had breakfast with him yesterday. 
so uh, one of the teams is asking about our grading breakdown and score and how much of it we'll be releasing. Right, so um, that's probably worth talking about. So we originally planned to have 100 points possible. 20 for, can you find the bugs that matter? 20 for, are they well documented? 20 for um, non-functional testing stuff like performance and security. And 20 for the bug report. And I'm not so sure that there's going to be much non-functional stuff here. I mean, maybe, like you mentioned, if they if they have two gigs of memory free and it takes more memory than it should, it's kind of in that space. Or if they, you know, it takes they've got exactly the minimum spec computer and it takes an hour to do an export. Some weird, tricky off defect they find that causes a problem in a loop that blows things up. Are they looking so, it, so. possibly? Uh, we could put usability in that category. Yeah. I think, and I think there might be there might be twenty points of usability in there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, there, there are th we certainly don't with each release we don't do an exhaustive, all encompassing regression test by any means. Um, so we've we've certainly released where we have on the Windows side um, ten to twelve different capture methods, and there's been cases where we inadvertently completely broke one of the methods. Mm. Um, scrolling capture has been a, a feature that, not because of the feature's functionality, but because the constantly changing uh, content we're capturing, algorithms used for doing that um, aren't always 100% perfect. Um, for instance, if you have a, a web page that has animating content on it, and we're trying to stitch together all the individual pieces, if you scroll once... Like an animated you, GIF, and the yeah. animated GIF changes, you get a problem. Exactly. So. That, that certainly can be seen as a functional problem. Um, at the end of the day, it's uh, it is uh, it appears to be a snagger problem. Um, so that would be another example. But we certainly have released snagger where there's been a completely functional failure in another part of the product, not on purpose, obviously, but. Uh, just for the nature so of I think software. I think we still do 20 points for non-functional. Um, and we'll be pretty easy on that because I don't know if there's a ton of the defects there, nor you should spend a ton of time on it. But the bug report is worth mentioning because bug report is a bug report accurate, right? Does it say the software is good to go? In fact, one team finds serious showstoppers, right? Um, is the bug report um, well written? Does it, as I read it, do I say, wow, these these jokers, even though that's accurate, these jokers don't know what they're doing, their spelling is bad, you know, all those kind of things. I think for North America, we're going to be tough on you for spelling and grammar. Um, we might be a little easier on continents where English is not our first language. If you're playing and you're in Mexico, find a way to tell us that. Um, we try to be fair there. Um, and um, um, does it reproduce the uh, That's in the bugs. Yes, that's uh, that's well. Are the bugs well written? If we can't reproduce it, it's not well written. For the bug report. Um, does it put me to sleep? Does it bore me? Is it is it is it jump me into a level of detail from the very beginning that is um, way too much for an executive to read? We got as an executive, can I read this thing and get what I need to know in five minutes? And then if I want to keep reading, is my time well spent? I think that's kind of important. Um, yep. And um, uh, okay. So There's, uh, definitely some uh, bug defects showing up here in the in the uh, in the bug tracker. Uh, TechSmith is going to have a lot of fun going through this uh, once we uh, drip, uh, distill it down to the non duplicates. There's a lot of questions regarding uh, scoring. If you have a ticket that's rejected for any reason, does that affect your scoring, or how does that affect your scoring? So if you file a bug and we can't reproduce it and it doesn't make any sense and it sounds ridiculous, then that's not good. Right? <laughs> like, that's bad. So we have to score you on are your bugs important bugs and are your bugs um, well written. And if they're not well written, then you're not going to get points for that. That's and if you're, and so if your team has one team has twenty that are well written, the other has twenty that are well written plus four that are um, just like I don't know, you were drinking too much and you filed them at the very end as a joke because you're trying to win for the jokiest award. My team won the jokiest award at the University of Maryland programming competition uh, in 1993, by the way. So 
um, you can go for that. But but um, seriously, if you the, the team that has a higher percentage of defects that make less sense to us, that are not insightful, that frankly, on a bad day, might not be the best use of a product owner's time to even look at, you're going to get scored down for that. That's that's how we score, right? Okay. There's a an interesting one here, and it uh, sort of relates back to that logs question that I asked earlier, but it's a bit of a more specific case here. I'm currently in the middle of a screen recording, and it's frozen. I've also closed the program from the taskbar, but the recording bar is still on my screen. The whole app seems to be stuck. Are there any kinds of logs I can grab from here to add to the bug report? Um, I would logs for that. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, if you're on Mac, you can uh, sample the process. So in the activity monitor, I'm not sure if it's Windows or Mac, but you can sample the process, and that will tell us what uh, part of the code is being currently executed during this. Uh, my guess, though, is this it's actually not locked. Uh, when we start a capture, the first thing we actually do is take a capture of your screen to show you what we're going to capture. Um, so I would guess that if you actually just close and I get via the task manager or activity monitor, if that will go away. Um, my guess is you might be doing a full screen capture. Even in that case, there should be a little blue bar for choosing image or video um, somewhere on your screen. But if not, I would definitely check task manager first before, uh, you know, like restarting your machine, for instance. Could it be, you know, the old prank where you take a, a yeah. screenshot of somebody's desktop and then they can't click on any icons? Nah. So I wonder if they're looking at a screenshot of their entire desktop yeah. and therefore the bar isn't really frozen, it's just an image. <laughs> That's funny, it's possible. Yeah, if they, definitely if they set it as their desktop. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, Matt, I'm going to make a strange request of you because I just noticed it over on the YouTube channel. Apparently, the YouTube channel is currently recording the picture of Mike's turkey instead of the beautiful picture of you and Jason. So if you could just click there we go. in Hangouts on you guys. Uh, yeah, thank you. That's funny. What the heck is wrong with my turkey? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, but then we can't lip-read what Jason is saying to us. So I'm seeing something on the back channel from Mike about scoring a list of teams from um, and publishing them. So but we do have we, we more for internal. Yeah, we do have an intent to publish the, the not only the winning team, but if you scored second or third or those kind of things. Uh, we're still talking about exactly how how to how to do that. Um, it gets it get, it gets tricky because it, it gets very very thin line between are these guys third or fourth, and you want to be fair, and you, how much time we're going to invest, and we absolutely will do that for first, second, and third, fourth. But, should we do that for 26 versus 27? We're going to talk about it. Is this channel streaming live to all the participants? Yeah, this, we're on, so, so this is a Google Hangout, and we're, we've got a YouTube video that, that scales to thousands of people. Gotcha. And um, they're actually asking questions here. Oh, and Jason is monitoring those inside of giving us the giving us the ones that he thinks are timely, relevant, and, and make the most sense. Different Jason. <laughs> yes, different Jason. Jason could too. <laughs> I have Left. questions, but I don't want to say anything that would be you know, give an advantage to one team's right. listening. Well, everybody should be listening, and it's all fair game. So yeah. they don't have to. They could be testing if they want. But this is a, this is an information. This is both an information source for the teams and also a great distraction from actually testing. <laughs> right? Yes. Um, here's an interesting question that I missed while I was on my bio break. Uh, you guys might have caught it, but it was under the fold. Is text cap is the text capture feature available in the Snagit version? Text capture. It is, right? Uh, it was removed in version 12. Oh, really? No OCR. That was great. And, yeah, as it turns out, it wasn't actually uh, under the hood OCR, but I never used um, it, so it sounded cool. Yeah, the usage was uh, um, very low on it. We do have a way to you know, tell the overall usage of certain features. Because you're spying on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so the usage was low. Also, as especially Windows 7 and Windows 8, especially, um, the overall support of it was becoming unwieldy. And, you know, if you weighed that, the usage of it and the, the overall uh, cost of how much it took to maintain it, and the, it, there's the opportunity cost of all the other things we could be doing mm -hmm. with that time. But anyway, thanks for the question. That's uh, better removed. So here's a quick. Okay. Also, we didn't ever intend to add it to the Mac version, so that's another <clears throat> way that we weigh features like that, especially parity features, is if we're going to be transferring it over to the Mac since it's a newer product, um, we obviously want to keep that, but if not, then. So question is, um, we need to choose which is more important, Snagit 12 or Snagit 12 editor? I'm not even clear, I'm not 100% sure what they mean by that. So in Snagit there are two processes that are one things that can be interacted with from the user. Snagit 12 is the capture engine. It's just a pure capture. capture. Editor is for editing those captures. So um, some people just want to use the computer to open like, images. For the oh, camera. okay. So you could, you, could, you could open, yeah, that makes yep. sense. I would say they're equally weighted, though. You could, you could open a picture of Steve Martin to make a meme. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Well, the one thing equally weighted, though. Well, the one thing you did say you cared about was the video editing. Absolutely. Which involves both of those processes. Which one of your kids do you love the most? Right? <laughs> I can't answer that. Right. They're both equally important. Certainly capturing tends to be the thing that people need to do for sure with Snagit. Mm -hmm. okay. And then editing is, you know, there's varying levels of you know, usage of that. Mm -hmm. In general, all people are editing, but how much they're editing is really the, you know, the big variance. Is setting, testing different color settings and resolutions the priority? And resolutions, I would... So, yeah, I'm not sure what color settings. That's like, uh, you can crank up the number of colors in your mm. desktop, I guess. That I wouldn't be as concerned about. Windows 2000 and maybe we're still around, maybe, but. So, how obnoxious is the sound of my typing, guys? Is it, is it really, I'm trying hard to be light. As those of you that know me, I usually bang. It's really, really painful. Yeah, it's still noticeable, but as long as you don't type too much and speak more, it's cool. They're yeah. testing a pre-release beta. This is real testing. This is a this is a this is a getting all kinds of testing for your product. <laughs> this is a hardened pre-release beta. This is not easy like oh bugs everywhere. Yeah. yeah. It's very hard. Uh, but we so. certainly ship with bugs every release, as I'm sure everyone does. Yeah, I, I think there's ever been any yeah, anything, person. anytime, anywhere yeah. <laughs> as a ship with bugs, without bugs. I did an EDI to EDI format converter once that uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find a bug. Yeah. Nice. Sure that if you sent enough stuff in there that it would overflow the disk hard drive, it would probably... Mm -hmm. But that was like mathematically, like you could put that in symbolic logic and you could execute it like a finite state mm -hmm. machine that was... Incredibly simple compared to anything real. I had a buddy that, that worked on um, um, transmissions for GM, and he did the same kind of thing, right? And so. Okay. Um, here's an interesting question for you, gentlemen. Would you consider an argument that multiple mid-priority bugs suggest less polish in the app feature compared to one high-priority bug? Really depends on how big the high priority bug is. Like if the high pri not that this it's this app, but the high priority bug is you can't log in to almost any web based app. That's worse than a bunch of mediums. It's like you can't do anything. I don't know what the equivalent for that would be. Snaggy would be like record crashes app. Right? That's worse. Right? <laughs> 
but I don't think we're going to find any of those today. I mean, I think if it's, you know... Don't be so sure. We have one person reporting in the chat that the Start New Capture feature does not work at all for me. Do we have any suggestions? Uh, they need to write their operating system. <laughs> what exactly they did? Did they use the keyboard shortcut? Did they use the mouse? It's a bug report. Give me a bug report. That sounds <laughs> awesome. But a good one. Right? A good bug report there would be, and no one, if no one else finds it, that'd be remarkable. Like, are they on Windows XP? Are they on Windows 2000? <laughs> What's the deal? I'm fascinated by behavior that uh, senior testers, knowledgeable testers, can write very, very good bug reports. Right? Our definition of a good bug report. All the things you look at and say, yeah, this is a good script for bug report. Yet for some reason, the same people, when they call help desk or submit a service desk ticket or whatever, forget all the things that they know. And they say, hey, I'm having problems with my computer, it won't work. And it's just horrible. And I look at these and I say, really? This is just another type of bug report. You know, you expect these help desk folks to resolve and address your issue. It's amazing. That's interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. One thing I can think of again, for uh, starting a capture, nothing happen happens is you may already have a capture started. So if you're doing a video capture and you try to start another capture, mm -hmm. nothing's going to happen. So um, I would venture a guess that that's something we've seen people struggle with where yeah. they forget the recording their screen. And then yeah. And you could you could reboot and try it again. And if it magically works this time, that's odd. Maybe maybe you had the video capture on or some other something else set. If you reboot and it doesn't work, that's really interesting. Reproducibility stipulation. Oh yeah. Submitted bugs before that say, for the life of me, I can't do this again. Well, if, and I have a screenshot that you, shows that it did happen. If you say in your bug report, it's not easily reproducible. But you know, one, one thing I like in a good bug report is, if you spend five minutes doing this, it'll eventually happen. That's fine. If you say it really did happen, I can't reproduce it at all. But here's a picture. That's 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 something. Mm -hmm. If you say. Uh, image capture for video doesn't work. Do Control Shift S4, and it doesn't work. And that's the entire bug report. Mm -hmm. And it does work for me. We got a problem, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah, that's that's no good. Certain, like you said, there's environmental things that usually contribute to that. Mm -hmm. That's what our tech support team finds the most. Um, that's why I mentioned the install uninstall because we try to test in a lot of environments, but there's only so many you can cover. When they mention that last bug, the first words were environment configuration mm -hmm. popped into my head. It sounds like something that may not be application directly related, something about the where it lives. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's usually a symptom that there's something that wasn't accounted for. But. So the other question I thought was interesting, because when we triad about uh, one high priority bug being the same as four middle like medium. Certainly if it's the thing like you can't log in or you can't take a capture, there's not too many little things that would ever add up to I can't take a capture. Right. Um, but we certainly weigh things. If you had a, like a, I remember for drawing call-outs, which are those speech bubble things essentially in Snagit, we had a case where a couple years ago where we had like 15 medium bugs open for call-outs. And... There were other higher priority things to work on, but we decided to take out that work over top of that one high priority thing because we knew the overall value of the feature was there, and it just made us look not fresh, sure. like it was actually done. So, here's a thought: when people ask, "Is one really important critical bug the same as equal to many some X amount of medium bugs?" Right? Mm -hmm. I might say that I don't have enough information to be able to answer. For yeah, instance. Fine. If it's a very severe bug, but it only takes two minutes to fix, and all of these many bugs take two days, or vice versa, that's yeah. another piece of information that's extremely important to answering that question. Uh -huh. How long does it take to fix? Mm -hmm. And there's probably other questions that you could ask about those. Uh, you know, add on top of the question, what's more important, this one or these many? Probably other factors you could add in that would change your answer back. Right. Like for instance, forth. do we think this is going to generate a high amount of call volume? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, it's going to generate that one. Is going to generate way more than all four of those. Mm -hmm. Well, that you know, then the, I don't want to fix that. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to deal in in what's the phrase? Absolutely. Hypotheticals. Oh, yeah. It's hard to deal in hypotheticals. But we could see a scenario where a big pile of mediums is more important than a high. Sure. And we could see the other way around too. Yeah. 
So while we're um, while we're talking, we do have six more comments. <laughs> so we have a couple of companies signed up to provide software under test. We might do another round or two with TechSmith. It seems to be going pretty well. But if you want to provide software under test, um, and that, and so that means lots of things. You get bug reports. You um, you get more exposure in the community. You want to do recruiting for testers or that kind of thing? You can talk about your work. Um, um, let us know. Send us some emails. And and uh, now that could be an interesting way for us to get to know each other a little bit better. So there's an interesting question that came in, um, and you you may or may not choose to answer it, but I'm going to ask it because it's in the chat. What is the expected behavior of the application when attempting to capture copyrighted material, i.e., movies, images, etc.? So you're trying, you're watching YouTube, and you're trying to capture a video, or Netflix, or let's say it's not copyrighted. Hypothetically, let's just say this is public domain YouTube. It's a YouTube of the first Charlie Chapman, whatever, whatever's expired. So let's, let's just say it's legal. Legal and, and it's on the screen. Um, we capture it. Um, for, video, for video, I think you'd probably expect, uh, because the frame rate for Snagit is meant to be about quick videos, not about the lossless, very, very high production quality video, um, you'd expect some choppiness, I would think, to be honest. As far as copyrighted material, depending on the technology, uh, a lot of those digital rights prevent anything like a Snagit or anything else yeah, from actually so. capturing so. the screen. If, if, if there's they, digital rights management in place to prevent you from recording, it's not going to work. It will be like the mega upload, right? Yeah. Are you using my tool to do something legal or something illegal? Right. Yeah, so in that case, it would be a black, you'd expect a black screen. And I, I would guess that YouTube does that by default, unless you specifically click the button to say, no, it's OK, shareable. I, expect, I would expect YouTube would not want you stealing their stuff that way. There are other ways to do it, but not with Snagit. Is it the tool's responsibility to control the uh, behavior of the user? Though? I think the operating system. I mean, I think that YouTube will not let you. I think that they put digital rights management into their if flash you player. If a video player other than YouTube that did allow Snagit to capture it, I don't. What I'm asking is, is it Snagit's responsibility to say, oh, "I'm not going to"? Uh, there's that. no way they could know. That's right. Yeah. I'm, and I, honestly, I'm not sure how to even respond to that uh, legally. Don't sure. Have the legalese and. Or the I, I think maybe the question was, is there some type of incredibly AI algorithm built into it that can tell copyrighted right. materials and how? Other, other than the, the source. <laughs> Technology, There's a TV show a, called Silicon Valley where they are exploring that right now. It's on HBO, <laughs> yeah, uh, and Mike, actually, the Mike first Judge episode, the first episode, is up on YouTube for free. Mike so, Judge's new. That is all fake. It's fake, not real. So <laughs> that's what that shows. Called Did Walmart that today. From the Did actual. you watch it? No, I so, just saw the previous one. episode one. This is swear words, but otherwise, it's pretty wholesome. And episode one, this guy has this software called Pied Piper, where you you upload your MP3 of your band. And it goes and searches the whole web for music, right? And then um, it, it, it says, your MP3 matches this song put out by so-and-so. It's, or it's, it gives you a green light, and then you know, hey, I, this is mine. I can, I can whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. or, or if you're digitally sharing, and someone sends you a file, you can go to Pied Piper and say, oh, it's not mine. It's not a leak. I don't want it. Never, never talk to me again, whatever, right? I'll so it's just it's a, there's an app for it. Yeah. Shazam does that. Shazam. You can hold your phone up, let it listen to a song, and it will identify the song, give you the download the cover art, the lyrics, the Wow. Well, well according according to the to the, the um the show, the 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 use of it's pretty innocuous and not very valuable. But they're like, Hey, how is he searching all of these gigabytes of compressed data so quickly? Well he invents a lossless compression algorithm. Yes. It's so incredibly powerful. And that's what everybody wants to buy from him. The creator of the show, Mike Judge, I read about this in Wired, actually went and asked a bunch of um, technologists what is a feasible, realistic idea that an imaginary startup company might develop. And they <clears> thought about it and they came up with this compression algorithm that somebody might, you know, make <clears> billions of dollars off of, and that was the basis for the company and the show. Yeah. He wanted it to be something believable. I like that he did the research. It was it was, it was it was a funny show. Yeah. 
I, I, I really enjoyed watching it. I don't have I don't have HBO. I don't have cable, mm-hmm. so I have no way of getting it at all legally ever. <laughs> so Matt, do we have a preferred graphical representation for our results of performance testing? Um, something in Microsoft Word that looks pretty would be cool. <laughs> Put in your test report. Surprise us, and you don't have to. You can. It could be anything. It could be anything. It could be um. It could be Excel. It could be. The results of performance, performance testing. So my guess would be that would be like, under this kind of processor with this much memory, this size of a thing took this long to export, and this size took that long to export, and that size took that long to export. That, that'd be like performance doesn't really play a huge part in this. Maybe well, memory use. Be, you know, if you memory use take a capture that's a bit of like a retina display, it's going to be a massive capture to start out, and then if you add 75 arrows and 150, and I'm not trying to give away a test case because it's kind of a ridiculous example, but um, so adding lots of things on top of your capture, like it's, it's memory usage, it's utilization there is going to go up. Sure. So as you add more, or as you do other things, and you can, and you can. So, so here's a question: You make more captures. Those are at the bottom of your Snagit window. Mm-hmm. Do they stay in memory? Are they uh, at disk somewhere? Some Cache of them somewhere? will stay in memory. Um, some of them kind of age out actually. So you did keep those open for, I think on the Mac it's like four days or something like that. One is similar. They kind of age out and fall off the end. Um, but so the ones that you're currently taking captures of, those would stay in memory. For that session, I guess. If you want to call it that. Please give away test that give away test yeah. ideas. Like, just have fun. It's okay, you know. Yeah. So if question, someone's watching and paying attention, then yeah. good for them. To the question, if there are indeed uh, performance type tests to be run, mm-hmm. and they figure out a way to run those performance type tests, the presentation, the results is really a lot of where the art comes into testing. How do you present those mm-hmm. in a clear, concise, consumable mm-hmm. manner that somebody can understand and clearly get information out of the data? Sure. There's a website called informationisbeautiful.net. It's just a blog. I don't know if you ever heard is of that, it. Is that tough, Steve? Oh, yeah, that information is beautiful. It's so important for data visualization. Informationisbeautiful.net is one of my favorite websites. Huh. I check it all the time. They take gigabytes of data and present it in ways that you'd never dream of. Colorful, unique ways that you look at it and you go, oh, I know exactly what these gigabytes of data are telling me. Nice, nice, and that's again the art behind the data and reporting and metrics and all that. Mm-hmm. Finding that that way to yeah, present guess, information. And also, though, I, I think in this one example, um, it sounds a little like missing the forest for the trees, though, because how pretty you make the the graph <laughs> of of the results yes. versus okay, what did you do? And at the end of the day, RAM usage is too high. That's the real result, but then what led to that? You know, you know, I'm, I totally agree that no. you know, if it's super pretty, but there's no meat behind it, it's it's, not, it's kind of useless. <laughs> right. you know, a lot of the information on information is beautiful is about how to make sure that you're not exaggerating yes. or misleading yes. your results by how you're displaying them, and they actually often take. Um, Newspaper article, newspaper, or 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 uh, <laughs> CNN graphs, yep. and redissect them to show what the data actually showed, because they'll remove a false axes or they'll point out that something one of the axes was logarithmic, mm-hmm. logarithmic, so it doesn't actually look like what it looks like. Occasionally, they'll actually have interactive contests too, where they'll present tons of raw data to the readers, mm-hmm. allow them weeks or months to come back and present. And it's funny to see the same data interpreted different ways and presented. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, the classic one is like a bar graph where you <laughs> yeah. don't start at zero, but you instead start at 100. Yeah. This one's way bigger than that one, but it's actually 110 and 104. <laughs> right? That's kind of, it's not to completely change the subject, but we, we recently did a research study um, for Snagit specifically about how people understand what they see in um, Something made in Snagit versus like an email with the, with words, just to, to understand. You know, because part of what we're trying to do is um, 
helping people understand each other better. So sure. that if we're in a different country, and you're trying to show me what you're seeing. Pictures worth a thousand. You know, like typing out a ten-page email, it's not going to be quite as well. We don't think it's not going to be as impactful as you know you showing me exactly what you're seeing, it. accompanied with some words, yeah. maybe and some other things. But you know, it's always very, you know, very telling when people. And sometimes, even internally at our company, we will find ourselves in this big email thread, and we're like, "Are we really living out what we're saying? Is you know, this thing where people can communicate?" Better? My common sense tells me that yes. There's a lot of times where a picture mm -hmm. can be a great supplement to a, to information to supplement your information yeah. and to textual information. What did your research show? Um, I don't think it's done actually. Okay. Uh, it's I'm sure it would support what I'm guessing. I, yeah, I mean. Interesting. You know, the results of it, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I took the test and I was the one, I they basically had it split up between people seeing just text and, and just the other content, mm -hmm. and I did the text one, so I only saw that part of it, Okay. and so I don't really know what content they made for the other people, Okay. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, the early signs were like, yeah, it's pretty obvious that people um, have a lot more context and a lot more. It also, you know, I think it's uh, retention to you know, people will remember what they're seeing maybe better than. Uh, of course, there's the whole you know, how you learn. And Everyone's that different, comes in, but as a comes general in rule, yeah. I think yeah. that yeah. Visual, yeah. most people uh, yeah, retain visual stuff better than just purely text yeah. or hearing it. Okay. Interestingly enough, I had some some feedback from some developers here at at uh, at Vendasta about this recently. I've been doing a big push to get all the testers here to include more screenshots. And one of our new, newest testers was including these beautifully great annotated screenshots um, on all of her tickets, but she wasn't uh, putting any text along with them, so you get this really short title and this beautifully annotated screenshot that told you everything. But when you're on a mobile device checking a defect that just got logged, you couldn't tell how important it was. So. You do need a balance of the two. Absolutely. The red arrow. Look at the red arrow compared to the green arrow to a colorblind person. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. mm. Mm. There are some very good colorblind uh, uh, testing apps out there. I've got a really nice one for my Mac that will, does overlays on my screen to show me the very what my screen would look like for various types of uh, color color blindness, so that I can tell if we've done a bad color combination in our app. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your company, Jason? I really don't know much about <laughs> I probably pronounce Vendasta. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I, I work for Vendasta Technologies. I'm the head of testing here. I, I guess would be the closest thing I have to a real title. Um, we're a, an online reputation management company. We make and sell software for small and medium business to monitor uh, what people are saying about them online and to help them engage with those people online so they, they can have strong online relationships um, with their customers. Uh, I believe our current corporate tagline is we turn your customers into strong, passionate advocates for your business. Nice. So the, and, and one of the reasons I mentioned that besides that Jason's totally volunteering for this, he's just giving up his time for the community, is that uh, they're a candidate to be uh, providing software under test for another continent. Which I guess, if you're listening today, probably you don't care because you're only competing in the North American round. <laughs> but um, is each continent judged separately? Each each continent has a separate set of judges. Most of the judges for each continent are local. Okay. Yeah. So you're most you're not judging uh, bug reports against App A against bug reports against App B. Um, well, right now, for instance, we've got Snagit for Mac, Snagit for PC. If you only have a Mac, you, you have to use the Mac version. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to get different kinds of bug reports. We try to minimize that. Yeah, yeah. But the separate competition in like Europe would be a different product. Right. So we're not going to rank North America number one versus Europe number one because they're totally different ecosystems. Okay. That's That's yes. Cool. We just had two new questions come in. I'll, uh, I'll ask them one after the other. Um, other than hotkeys, is testing the different configurations and preferences a priority? Um, generic answer would be it, de it depends, <laughs> as with everything. 
So I could I could give some advice here, which you might or might not use, and that I would explore it a little bit. And if it looks buggy, I would explore it a lot more. And if it doesn't, I might try to find a better use of my time. It's kind of sort of the generic test strategy, yeah, think, right? And also maybe based on the label of the, the preference, whatever it might be. If it sounds like it relates to something with capturing or editing, um, that would certainly have a higher um, importance versus something that's about how to, you know, log data or how to uh, do something that's not a user visible. Does it have Twitter integration? It does. It does. I yeah. just I just made that up. I just kidding. <laughs> So, um, and the next question in the queue is, how many different images, such as arrows, et cetera, all your various overlays for highlighting, um, should you be able to add to an image and snag it? Just you're trying to get a general idea for performance. I didn't understand that question. I'm going to look, look it up. Did you understand the question? Uh, it sounded like they're just asking what types of annotations to make or would be the most... Is there an upper limit to the number of annotations that they should be able to make? Will the app slow down if they do lots? Um, Snagit so windows will slow down if, once you get to a, you know, uh, I'd say a large number of annotations, yes. How long is, how large is large? Um, it's based both on the number of annotations and the image size. But I would say over... 15 to 20 annotations. These like, like vector graphics are these layers that are being added on top? Uh, they are vectors. They're not in the paint, you can draw forever. Yeah, yeah, it's paint, you, you can just keep drawing and drawing. It doesn't really care. Yeah. But if you're doing vector layers, there might be. That's right. And certainly, and that's why I mentioned your, your screenshot size, because if you have a big monitor and a big screenshot, each change you make to the screen is causing like a redraw to happen. How do you do that? Or is it is it like a? Did you guys use design patterns, like a decorator pattern, where you just plop on additional things? But it's it's, a, it's an object and it has a location. In. Yeah, I mean, most of them have the objects. It's definitely object oriented for sure, um, and that each object that you add has a bunch of properties associated with it. It also has its you know rectangle and dirty rectangle, so that we know you know roughly if something else occupies that dirty rectangle, what needs to be redrawn. But when you have lots of things all over your capture, uh, the redraws tend to be a lot more expensive, especially if you add more objects on top of themselves. So in, a, in another century, um, I worked at a company that uh, used MSC and Visual C++, mm -hmm. and, and we were doing bill of materials software, which integrated with AutoCAD and had its own MDI, multiple documentary. Yeah, yeah. That was it's old school. But now I'm imagining your annotations are newer than that, right? They came out later. Uh no, I would well no? probably a little bit newer than that, but they were they're all written. So I actually worked there from 2000 to 2003, and 2000 technically was still 20th century. But it's not. It sounds really impressive to say, and it's a different I think, century. Uh, I think those annotations as as vectors were added in probably 2000. Three or four. Yeah. I, I didn't. I worked. At, I started at Texmo in 2007. I think version eight was the first version that introduced the vector. So in 1998, I took Visual Basic at Grand Rapids Community College at night. I was working professionally in Unix and wanted to get to Windows. And there was a guy. I learned. I got Snagit. And we hired this guy named Stacy Hunt. I worked to, to 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 um to work with me at PCR in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he was documenting some stuff, and I said, you got to use Snagit. It's fantastic. Every day trial. It's like 20 bucks. You just buy it. Um, and now he works for TechSmith and Snagit. That's awesome. Good to meet you. I mean, I, I've used this tool so many times <laughs> throughout my career. It's, they're hosting... It is the so tool, preferred tool. In this place like a, yes. yeah. It's the kind of thing where you buy it. I mean, not like... This is not a sale. I'm not. They're not paying me anything to do this. They're demonstrating their software, but it's the kind of thing. I, I'm not to make you too mad, but on a Mac, a lot of these tools are built in now. But um, I use Camtasia. Like you buy it as a tester, and you keep it with you when you go to the next job. And they say no budget, or you have to use Screenshot, or whatever they say. And you say no problem. I got it on a thumb drive. I own a personal license. It's like a, think about it like a carpenter taking these tools with him. A lot of tools are open source these days, and you can do that for free. But this is one that 
I like. I was going somewhere with that. Oh, well, Stacy Hunt works at... Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, they're um, opening up their facilities for us to do lean software delivery, uh, which is the first time that course has been done publicly ever. And um, um, TechSmith is hosting it. And we only had to let a couple of people in free. No big deal. <laughs> so I'm super excited. It's going to be good. And Stacy and I started at TechSmith around the same time. Yeah. We both started as Windows developers, and he's still a Windows developer on the team. Yeah, I saw him at uh, DevCon in October. Oh, yeah. We have an internal developer conference. So. Mm-hmm. So I went to the Lansing Convention Center, mm-hmm. and they gave me a password to get in the Lansing because they had the whole thing sold out, right? And you go in, and there's these guys with battle axes and robes in front of the door. <laughs> and you're like, "What is going on?" Uh-huh. Oh, it's just our it's our internal developer conference this year, and the theme is Lord of the Rings. Uh-huh. Okay, that's that's I'm worried there. Right? That's, <laughs> that's security. So amusing. It was fun. I think I'm gonna hit it. So you got any other last. You gotta head out. You gotta head out. Yeah, we didn't expect you to stay this long anyway. So thanks. And hopefully we'll be working together again soon on something. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for. I'll uh, I'll get your I'll get your email and we'll invite you to the bug tracker on Monday. Okay. We'd really like your feedback on what bugs you found the most valuable. We'll use that for input and winners. And I think Jess is taking a ticket to Germany. He pitched this to me. He mentioned something about Germany. <laughs> I'll let you guys fight yeah, it out. Right? Arm wrestling or something. It's a little more appropriate for that, that crowd, I'm sure. Yeah. We'll let you get out of the shot. Great. Thanks for taking so much time, Jason. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you. I'll be in your office tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Take care. Thanks. Have a good night. Would you like me to go grab you some food? Would that be helpful? Um, you can Google map food in the area, and I can get whatever you like. That'd be fantastic. It's okay. like I don't need anything. Yeah, I'd, well, I'd, I'd figure that out. Coke and a brownie or something at some point would be good, but we've only got oh, two hours left. Yeah, we've still got two hours left. I can't make so. two hours. I'm going to have to get something to eat. Yeah, get something. Yeah, you go get something to eat. Bring me something. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me look around and I'll, and I'll do the thing where I look at the screen. Actually, we've got more people on the Hangout, so I can talk to Justin, Mike, and stuff this year. So. You guys remember that last year? I was all... Mm-hmm. Nothing okay. happening here in 2 a.m. in the morning anyway, so I might as well <laughs> hang out here. <laughs> well, you know, you're one of those guys that sleeps, right? Sometimes? Sometimes. Must be nice. Subway have anything you can eat? I just I'm sure I could two, concoct a sandwich two, with no meat. No, just two two chocolate chip cookies and a and a and a and drink would be fine. I can do that. How about your, uh, or there's a, there's a Seven Eleven. There's a Seven Eleven one more block that way, and I could Slurpee would be cool. Slurpee? Okay. I'm gonna hit Subway and get a sub, and I'll get you a nice Slurpee. That sounds Whatever great. You like. Uh, Coke, Coke or Mountain Dew, either one. Coke or Mountain Dew. Thanks, All right. Man. Neither Coke nor Mountain Dew are advertisers for the Software Testing World Cup. I'm just thirsty. <laughs> I'll be right back. Thanks, Damon. You know, Obama would probably not approve of that fast food. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, if we did this in New York City, and it would have to be less than 30, 20 ounces? Is 20 ounces is the limit for a drink in New York City? For, for right. So... Any more questions? How's the bug filing going? I haven't I haven't looked at um haven't looked at Agile Manager lately. Looks like we're over three hundred now. Awesome. We're gonna have a lot of fun judging. Supposedly we have forty criticals. Yeah, it's really hard to judge what a critical is. I, I doubt. Literally, we will be the judge of that. And some of them, like, um, who was it? Jason mentioned that um, they're in the actual app itself, this is worth saying a few times, the current version, if you say go to external web page, 
for many things, uh, it's going to be broken because it's going to be trying to go to a web page for Snagit 12, which isn't released yet, and the web page isn't live. Mm -hmm. So you're going to file that as a critical bug because it would be a critical bug if it actually were a bug, but it's not. We're not going to hold that against you because uh, we didn't let you know. So don't worry about it. I suspect a lot of those critical bugs are you know, not so much. Three hundred and twenty-eight bugs, man. So uh, we have two hours left of the competition. So we've had an hour of bug hunting. Now, does anybody? None of the current judges were on my team. We did this in Seattle a few years ago, and you would be amazed how fast the last half of it goes. And by the time you go, oh, we should probably start working on a report. It is probably too late. Uh, you'll be amazed how fast it goes, and then you'll be, oh, I'm only halfway done with my report, and we should be. So you probably want to start thinking about strategies for your test report about now. Think about what do we want to do with the two hours we have left? How are we going to spend it? Who's working on what? What are the assignments? How can we not duplicate effort? Right? What areas of the software do we think require further investigation? If we had to write the test report now, what would we write? Can we get started on that and then change it later? So that you're taking an iterative approach, and when you run out of time, you can click Submit. By the way, Mike, what's the email address they're supposed to submit the bugs to? Mm, the report me, the reports. The reports. Let me find it. It's not that I give it up. To so if you were one of those teams that has uh, 10, 11, 12 bugs found already, that might require some summaries to, to be worked on. So I posted the email in the YouTube channel. It's actually just test report at softwaretestingworldcup.com. Looking for the is a test report at softwaretestingworldcup.com. Yes. Yeah, I'm also going to email that to the um, players Google group. Is everyone automatically mm -hmm. subscribed to the players Google group, or did they have to sign up? I don't know. I love to my favorite getting these emails from the test Software testing World Cup players. That is us, right? We did we did make that. Mm. <laughs> nope. What I really actually liked with our Agile manager from HP is that we immediately used it without any big introduction, like you and uh, the technical guys just went into it and filtered and looked at the bugs. And also from the support side, we didn't get any, I think, two, two user requests 
which was user handling in the end. Um, so it was really very smooth. Um, Quite surprised. Did you see this comment from Chelsea Baltieri? Was he IE10? Um, no, she's, teammates can log in but can't see the team when she goes to defect manager application. They're a, it's probably the same thing that I had, is my guess. Yes. I sent her the screenshot attachment. To uh, Chelsea? Yes. Great. I was at Chelsea. I had one from, from another participant as well via email. Your audio is breaking. I put it in the text. Now your audio is back. Is it back? Yes. Oh, I had I was touching. Um, Jess gave me this super mic. Ah, okay. Which I was I was touching and touching a mic and making it move can often screw it up very badly. So I'll, I'll stay away from that. It seems to be a fantastic video. Selfie covered. I'm just checking my email here. It's all different input streams of problems. Right. So you want me to uh, send an email to Chelsea, or you did it already? Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you haven't already. No, I have. I can. You just need to click send. Okay. Great. So what else is going on? Um, agile testing days. Oh, agile testing days. Um, gosh, I'm sorry. This sounds it's commercial. But um, in addition to the World Cup, which is going to be the afternoon of Monday of agile testing days, I'm doing a half-day tutorial that morning on lean software testing. So uh, if you're coming, even if you don't win, come to Germany anyway. We'll, we'll drink some, some beverages. It'll be fun. And uh, or come to New York City. Justin's going to be in New York City. Jason's going to be in New York City in August for CAST, the conference for the Association for Software Testing. It's in August. Um, when's the European round? The European round. Don't forget about Test Retreat and New York also. The weekend before. In New York City, in Midtown, and uh, the night of test retreat, we are going to um, probably be on a boat. So it's gonna be fun. Um, all that stuff on my event. I'm just talking to fill space now. Europe is June 13th. This this is crazy. This is crazy. I gotta work on this, and this is like humble brag, right? So I'm going to Spain in Madrid for Expo QA on the 23rd of May. On the 28th, I fly to Scotland for a day of training. Then it's the Netherlands, June 2nd, for um, the test retreat. And then I go to Estonia, June 4th, to do some stuff with Pete Whalen. Then on June 7th, I fly home. USA. Get home at 9 p.m. Eastern, and at 3 a.m. we were doing the Asia round of the Software Testing World Cup. Um, that's just crazy. <laughs> that's just like that's, that's the world tour. 
That's a problem. So what I have to do now is I've got to call it Estonia Airlines and try to make my flight a day earlier. And then if I can, that'll leave me in the Netherlands a day earlier. Then I call Delta, get them to move me a day earlier, get home a day earlier, and I at least get some sleep between between getting back from Estonia and the World Cup. And Damien's back. My Slurpee. Four in here. You should be Four. Okay, wait. <laughs> don't, make, don't make the mic angry. Is the, is the mic working for everybody? Can you hear me? Hear me well? Yeah, it's better now. Slurping away. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Do you know Justin? You know Justin, right? Justin. Just interact with Twitter and other. Didn't he come down? To, Justin was in Ohio for the thing. I think we met at Lean Coffee before. Yeah, Lean Coffee. That's it. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi, Justin. Hey, how are you? Good. Thank you for the cookies. Sorry. Right. Being polite, Damien is not eating in front of the camera, but I don't really have a lot of choice. So. Sorry. I told you, uh, Subway, I wanted a soda. Where are you from? Yeah, in uh, Michigan, they call it pop. <laughs> I've been living here 16 years. I still think it's kind of, that's a weird word, pop. That's <laughs> Onomatopoeia, that's the term, right? But it's not. Onomatopoeia is it sounds like what it is. Does pop make a fizz, I guess? It doesn't yeah, sound like a pop. Pop is a pound. Yeah, it's the same word backward and forwards. But it's... um. Fizz is a Fizz, right. But see, fizz is the sound pop makes. But pop is not the sound it makes. So it's not, it's not onomatopoeia. It's just a funny word. <clears throat> Let me go check to see if there's more questions. Mm -hmm. Everybody's probably busy testing. Doesn't want to listen to me. Yeah, I think David asked: uh, Is Snagit supposed to be able to record videos from other media players? It sounds like going in the direction like could it record from YouTube or in this case uh, yeah. VLC? I think YouTube record. Uh, so, it, so, the, so the operating systems have have the ability to turn digital rights management on. What that basically means is. You can't record it, and I'm pretty sure YouTube does that by default. Um, so I would expect it to not work if you tried to record YouTube. I seem to recall I did that six, seven, eight years ago when YouTube was a new thing that doesn't work. Hey, hey, Damien, do you know SQA Matt, testing curator? Matt Hutchinson. Matt Hutchinson. Matt Hutchinson has been tweeting, I don't know if I should follow the World Cup or I should watch the NBA playoffs. I'm, I'm, that's oh, yeah, awesome. That. I'm really pleased that he would even consider Right, because really, it's like me looking at the screen, fucking rubbish. Um, next Tuesday is the month of meetup that he runs. That's Columbus. I get the cities in Ohio would start with C confused. Yeah. <laughs> right. Although it looks like I might be coming to Dayton in um, the fall. For Dayton, I might be coming to Dayton. There's a city in Ohio that doesn't start with C. It's kind of strange. If anybody's in Michigan, we'll be at GLSEC, the Great Lakes Software Excellence Conference, May 5th. Um, Florida in July, 
for the Agile Conference. And Kitchener, Waterloo, uh, um, uh, Toronto area, Canada in September for Kitchener, Waterloo Software Quality Association Conference. I think that's the um, most of them. At some point I should do some work. Mm. <clears throat> you got all chocolate chip. Hmm? You got all chocolate chip. That's great. No, that's don't don't. don't. You can't go wrong. So let's see how the bug tracker's doing. So at 44 teams, we have about 160 players for um, North America. At 200 teams, how many did we cut off, Mike? Is Mike still there? When did we when did we cut off registration, Mike? Was it 250? For Asia or Europe? Asia. Europe's not that high up there, is it? <laughs> yeah, we made uh, the registration close at, uh, I think, 230 plus. So, yeah. And Asia was also 270. So, we still have a uh, couple of hundred in the waiting list. If we really get more volunteers for the judging team on board, uh, we could let more in. But, yeah, if they go with the same speed uh, of bug entries, um, we need a different approach. Yeah. So how many, was 270 in Asia, was we capped it at 270 for now, unless we can find more staff? I mean, everybody here's, Mike, Mike and I, Mike has a day job, he works for the Ezen Hill Tushai. This is pretty much all volunteer stuff for him. I'm getting a small honorarium for some of my time, but everybody else otherwise is, is volunteer, and they're putting in their own time. And, um, uh, 270 teams is more than a thousand testers for Asia, and that's when we capped it. What the total number is like 360 registered. We have a waiting list. It's like more than 100 teams. The interesting thing about Asia is that YouTube is completely blocked. So the, stra the strategy we are using to broadcast and coordinate this will not work in um, Asia. So. If you have a solution, I mean, I think that we've already got a couple spikes driven through a couple of ideas, but but if you have a solution for that, for this kind of collaborative tool that can scale, um, that's a thousand simultaneous viewers, right? Maybe not. Maybe one per team, several hundred simultaneous viewers. Right. I have a video license to Skype. I don't think it's going to scale to 200 people. We could look into it. Mm -hmm. I should I should ask her about con concerto. She was really into concerto for a while. You know, we could probably get her as a judge. She'd be, I mean, some other continent. She'd be great. Yeah, we have some other strong continents lining up after Asia and Europe. Uh, yeah. I mean, we have the global judge team. So who are like uh, fire department uh, helping out where it's needed, and yeah, I think we definitely call them in for Asia and Europe. Yep. Now last year I mentioned before we ran this, and to tell a story, I think we've got the last year we ran this with 17 teams, one competition. This is a true story, and the team that won was from Europe. And I wanted, I wanted to give them a physical silver coin apiece. It turns out that shipping silver from the United States to Europe is remarkably hard. Um, maybe I could have found find a supplier in Europe, so it was from Europe to Europe. But I just couldn't get it done. 
So I said, well, I've got a physical prize for you, or I could just give you, you know, Amazon gift card or something. What do you think? And I didn't tell them what the prize was, and they all said, well, give us the prize. We want the. We want to know what it is. And I spent like four months trying to get it to them, and I had to say, I can't. It was more than six times the price of the silver to find someone willing to do the thing to get it to them, right? Why? Um, I think it's like not legal. <laughs> the export, and he was. I mean, you could, you could, you could, you could put him in your backpack and go on a plane, and you could bring it over. You had to go in the dark net. To, but, uh, but, but, but to ship it is like, yeah, he had to like lie about what was in the container to get to the place. And then, and then I'm protected because I don't know that he's doing it, even though I do. So um, I said, look, sounds I, like a sting. It's only it's it's supposed to be a silver coin, and I just can't get it to you. And first, they were really disappointed. They thought it was going to be some kind of cool gamey thing. And then I couldn't get it to him. But I said, but I'll find you something cool. Trust me, I'll find you something cool. Six months later, I email him and say, hey, we are doing another international competition, much greater scope, multiple tiers of awards and prizes, multiple thousands of euros of prizes, world competition in Germany. Why don't you guys come be the judges? So that team that won the NRG Global Competition will be on the global jury for the world competition Excellent. in Potsdam in November. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to have fun. It's a worthy prize. If you win, of course, you can put this on your LinkedIn. You can put this on your resume. Somebody else has a certification because, you know, they they took a three-day class. That's cool, whatever. But you competed against 44 other teams in a time-boxed <laughs> competition judged by people of reasonable reputation. And you provided the most value for the product owner for a commercial product, pre-release quality software beta. What do you think is more valuable? <laughs> what do you think has more about you as a test? Matt, do you still have any product owner type people there? I'm afraid I do not. Hello, okay. Alessandra Moriari is with us. No worries. <laughs> Hi, guys. We, 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 ha we do not have any product owner type people, but I can fake it. Well, do you recall from our discussions earlier, one of the questions that just came in is, Aside from usability fixes, has TechSmith traditionally had many issues around the Snagit installer itself and local program files? Not lately. We where got our first test from? report in. <laughs> what's that? What's that, Ali? Um, where are we getting these questions from? Is it from? Uh... Oh, I'll send you the link. It's. So, so we are in a, in a Google Hangout. The Google Hangout. Hey, Mike said it. Yeah, it's in, it's in your chat. Um, make sure you pause it as soon as you open it because it's <coughs> playing, and then it'll play 30 seconds delayed of this. But oh, okay. There's a YouTube page that we're broadcasting to, and people can leave text comments, and those auto refresh <laughs> if you have the page open. Oh, great! Uh, Thanks. They don't so much auto refresh very often anymore. We've got. 156 mm -hmm. comments, so I'm manually refreshing them these days. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be that the like the, there's a like it's not great. <laughs> they were auto refreshing when we had fewer than 100. It was yeah. it was working really well. There's an interesting solution to this problem though. You're using a comment session, refreshing, streaming. Interesting way to use the tool. That I don't know that they originally thought about. When they could we have done this? Could we have done this at all five years ago? This whole idea, this global, international, distributed, web-based competition. I mean, we could with, like, email and text and bug tracker and no interaction at all. Maybe. It's amazing. We probably would have done it on IRC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been okay, I guess. Yeah, and about once a minute or so, I go over to the YouTube page and change my sort from newest first to top comments and back, and that gets me a reasonable reply time on anybody maybe asking a question on the YouTube stream. So for other... Um, it would be neat if you could find a way to leverage Twitter more for other continents. Right? Your yeah, mic is moving again. Mike is moving. Yeah, now we can hear you again. Okay, that was my arm. That yeah. I'll stop doing that. 
Yeah, I know for for the Asia competition, we're going to have to maybe, yeah, Twitter, have a specific at Twitter address that they can ask the questions at because YouTube won't be able to keep up with. What do we got, 250 teams for Asia region, Mike? Yes. Yeah. If you want to be a volunteer to help us judge bug reports in Asia, <laughs> we might be interested in talking to you. But that's still like, how do you scale? How do you make sure that there's consistency across the judges? How do you coordinate judges? Like, it doesn't really help that much if, if we get a bunch of people who don't know each other that are all in different time zones that are trying to... That's why we tried to keep the judges local to the continent. The competition yeah. timing local to the continent. And then Mike and I, we can stay up late or get up early or whatever. Sometimes. It's just, yeah. I'm pretty sure there's some sampling theory that we can throw at this problem so that we get good cross-checking so that everything, every uh, every competitive, every team gets judged by three different judges, but not necessarily any two teams by the same three judges. That's a, yeah, we've, we've been exploring that on the judges list and hadn't gone that far down the road, but that, that's, that makes sense. I used to work for a stats company, so <laughs> been there, done that, know how to do it. You would love, um, well, there's a section on lean software delivery I'm building out where I'm talking about linear regression, standard deviation, different kinds of curves for predictions, right? Because, like, if mm -hmm. you assume it's a bell curve and use standard deviation and it's not, you're, that's bad. Uh, well, we no, that. not necessarily. You just have to have the right teacher's t-test to uh, what for your standard that? deviation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. One of the more esoteric things I've had to test over the years as I actually had to test a random number generator to make sure that it was actually producing one random numbers and two random numbers with a given distribution. Yeah, that's just crazy. So we get, yeah. <laughs> we, we did a, an exercise like that in one of the Sydney testers made up exactly with the, a random number generator. Actually, it was a coin flip. And we were trying to uh, to say how random the co the coin flip was as well. So that was that was quite an interesting um, thing to do. So I used to work for a company that does uh, statistical analysis of silicon designs. Um, so like 35, 22 nanometer silicon designs. And so we were doing everything out in six sigma space, trying to make sure that all our random number generators were accurate out in six sigma. So that sounds incredibly interesting, right? That's um, Jason. Jason, sorry. I'm you, trying to wrap my head around how you can prove or disprove that a random number generator has the proper distribution. <laughs> it's I mean, fun. It produces <laughs> the number six 19 times in a row. Conceptually, that that's does not necessarily mean it's not random. Conceptually, that's possible. Right? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a confidence interval in sampling theory. And I've been thinking about confidence intervals a lot in terms of um, um, velocity, say, for your velocity for your team. And there's a lot of literature about, about, about confidence intervals. And I don't know how you can possibly predict confidence. In sampling theory, you can predict confidence intervals because you know how many people are actually there and how many you've got to do the math to figure out how valid that sample is. But if you're just well, talking about velocity, I don't a little odd. Well, one of the, when you're doing things for statistical software, you're not using true random number generators. You're using pseudo-random number generators, and they all have a salt. And so a lot of your testing is done with specific salts because you know that with this salt, this particular distribution will give me this order of answers. And so you'll have seven or eight known salts, but then you have to go off your known salt, go to an unknown salt, and simply produce... 2 million, 3 million random numbers and start running things like teacher's t-test on them to find out if they, uh, what the distribution is. What did you call that? A t-what-what? What? Teacher's t-test. Teacher's t-test? Yep. It's a, it's a statistical method for verifying the distribution of uh, events. Right. So this is the problem with... You move the mic again. Yeah, this is a problem with the distribution theory. Is like is you start saying, well, take the average. Well, no, you can't take the average because if you take the average, you're going to be like if you're trying to predict mm -hmm. the number of the number of test cases you'll get done or whatever you're predicting, the number of uh, the number of bugs you'll find, the number of stories you'll get done is a lot more valid. 
Our when friend. I did my computer science degree, our college here uh, that I studied at is uh, highly integrated with the math college. So I actually have a minor in statistics. I have a, I have a degree in math and a concentration in CS, which is that's like the other way around. I didn't take that many stats courses. But I find the conversation fascinating because you start with, well, you can take the average. Well, no, because you're going to be wrong half the time. Like you're taking the average to predict when you're going to get, that's the middle. So if you take the average and, and predict how many stories you're going to get done next iteration, you'll be wrong half the time. And then when you're wrong, you're going to beat each other up for being late. So you have to subtract the standard deviation. But that's not really valid. Why, why subtract one standard deviation when you predict it? You need to know confidence intervals, and then you start getting into that, and then you keep going, right? And your, your t t teacher's t-test is the next step after that. Like, every model, you break down and say, that's not a good enough model. There's another one underneath. Mm -hmm. That's I was, fascinating. Yeah. I was an early adopter <clears throat> during the first push of the online poker movement a poker player and I got into the online world and it wasn't very long before I got very suspect of random the old cards. Oh wow. And that's when I started I'd say no more than a hobbyist, but I started reading up on this stuff to better understand it. And that's when I discovered that randomness in computer programs was uh, difficult if not impossible. I think they come pretty close. But I mean this was ten years ago. Yeah. Well it depends on your depends on your definition of, of random, right? But but Wrong I think sense of purposes for the poker program. Or right, good enough. Purely. Right. So Sanju Kumar is um, asking, wait a minute, I don't see how to edit the video in Snagit. Um, can anybody help him out? I would give you a bonus if you can help him out. I really can't go into the software right now. I suppose I could mute and disappear for a minute. You guys don't really need to hear about us talking about poker. But... Um, <laughs> Um, uh, to pick the ba -ba -ba. So can somebody else? Because I don't even I don't have the. Right. I didn't install it either. I, I don't have the I have the previous version of Snag installed, which I want to keep. It's licensed, so I don't want to install the new one. Suppose I could if I could fire up a virtual machine and try it. But I would argue <laughs> these features functionalities might be as important as the editing and saving. So is there a valid business cases for that? Um, it's up to the team's discretion. Check it out, poke it, see how it reacts. And if you think it's worth it, go ahead. Right. Yeah, but Why is it muted? Stop muting. Is it muted? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, you can hear me? Good. Um, so, the question is, hey, we're told that we're supposed to edit videos. That's new functionality of Snagit 12. How do I do it? That seems like a reasonable question. <laughs> so I'm going to try to download Snagit 12 for this thing and see if I can figure it out. But if anyone else can figure it out, Tell us on the YouTube channel, save me some time. I'd appreciate that. I'm going to try to download it now um, and, and have a look. Nobody knows how many software testers it takes to stream. You're on mute again. Very, very soft. Okay, I had my hand next to the mic again. Yes, clear. 
How many software testers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Depends. If you do waterfall, <laughs> it, will, it will at least take a very long time. No, tell me. Well, you got to understand our role. We don't actually screw the light bulb in. We notice that the light is broken, and we file a ticket. <laughs> you need the developer to fix it. That's like my best software testing joke. It's kind of lame. Sorry. What time is it now at your side? Seven or eight twenty? Eight twenty one. So the composition is supposed to run till nine thirty. Oi. Uh, yeah, yeah. We added that extra half hour for the meet and greet beginning. Editing video. So, Mike, what's new and exciting in Germany? What is what? What are you working on? Oh, at the moment, um, I have a project which will be finished next week for some newspaper company. Uh, the QA guy went in. Uh, what do you would call it? Paternally leave. So, in Germany, you can take like 14 months of of uh, like baby vacation. And normally the women take uh, 12 months, and the father often takes like two months. So and that's what uh, he did to spend the first uh, days, etc., with his baby. So it was a quite interesting project um, because they have these with different rollout, uh, with different front-end servers, etc., and you have to do because it's newspapers, dynamic content, uh, but you still have to make sure that your new version doesn't screw up the, the uh, configuration. But it's very, yeah, still a manual process. I think we uh, talked a little bit in Miyagi-Do about it, uh, if it would be useful, senseful uh, to automate it, and, and how much could be automated, since uh, a lot will be false alarm due to the dynamic content. Yeah, so, and finally, they actually got some information technology student in uh, who is working there and also can use this for his uh, bachelor um, thesis. So, quite interesting. Yeah, and we had, what was his name? Rod Stewart. Because it's a big newspaper, so they often have some kind of celebrities. And, uh, yeah, one day we met Rod Stewart in the elevator. That was a little bit awkward and unexpected, so <laughs> it was like, uh, okay, are you real? Um, yeah, but I'm looking forward to my next project, because I will also go to some conference on a boat, uh, but in Norway, that should be interesting, uh, because I think... free test conference, right? Yeah. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Yeah. Like, find, a way, find a way to drop my name. Be like, you know, I think it'd be really great to have... I think a Hoyer guy. The conference on a boat. Yeah, especially they have these. Um, how to call it in English? Uh, the twenty-four hour day. So where it doesn't get dark for six months. So you probably I need to take a mask with me to sleep at night. So yeah, it should be cool, and it's something different than the daily routines. Yeah, and after that, I actually go in a project where I have to test HP software. Uh, a different kind of software than we are using, uh, but that's also some ironic uh, side note. Yeah, and of course, uh, preparing for the Agile testing days for our uh, wildcard uh, event before, quite happy about that. So, and let's see if we get some great games uh, for the people playing there.
How about uh, Alessandra? What do you what do you uh, work on? What's new with you? He's in Florida now, right? Yes, yeah, in sunny Florida. I, I can't remember. Sorry? You're not in Tampa. No, I'm not. I'm in, uh, I'm in Miami. Miami. Uh, but, but I'm working for Smart Bear, and Smart Bear's office is in Coconut Creek, which is about an hour north of Miami driving. So it's a bit of a drive every day. That's why I was late just now. You, know, you never know in Miami how much traffic you're going to get, and today was a lot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, I mean, I'm really enjoying living here. Um, it's summer every day, so I can't I can't complain. It's been a, a huge a huge change from from moving from Australia. So, um, so far so good. Are you just about to experience your first Florida summer? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Are you just about to experience your first Florida summer? You said I'm just about to experience my, Flo my first Florida what? Summer. Florida. summer. Yeah. My very first Florida summer. I arrived here at the end of August last year, so summer was, it was the last few days of, of summer here. So um, I'm already I'm already f f feeling the heat here already, um, and I and I've been told it's going to get much much worse very quickly. That would be my understanding. Of the <laughs> I'm going to be in Orlando in July for graduate. Um, bit of a bit of a bad It's a big state. It's like I reveal my ignorance when I talk about Europe. Oh, you're in Norway? I'm going to be in Scotland. Like, <laughs> it's not the same thing, Matt. It's not. <laughs> but everything is so much closer over there, right? <laughs> well, okay. you take a 10 hour plane flight to get to Europe, and it's in Europe, and it's you know, a couple hours away. It's a plane. That's true. But we feel the same way coming from Australia because there is no countries that we share borders with, for starters. And anywhere, anywhere that you want to go is at least 12 hours away by plane. So when you talk about Europe with us, it's like, oh, gee, he's, you know, he's just not going down the road. It's all, all so close over there. Not sure if you guys saw this, but there's someone asking on YouTube if there is a um, a hangout option for them to ask questions, or if only the chat option is available. I just answered him. Oh, okay, cool. No, I think. Yeah, I can't can't hear you either. Yes. So, so Clint Hoagland, who is an employee of TechSmith and is a tester at TechSmith, is lurking. And he can answer some of these questions that we are getting specifically about what the software should do. So we should invite him into the Hangout if we can find a way to get him. So that would be valuable. But otherwise, it otherwise sounds like a good idea. Hangout is really for judging. So I'll, I'll, I'll try to Twitter and the techniques to try to get time. Or maybe you could just hear me say, hey, Clint, like, I'm going to send you a direct message.
So currently I don't hear anyone. thing you want to make sure you do if you haven't already in YouTube is make it newest first comment, not I think we are testing your microphone too much. I've been muting it when I I'm, know that I'm going to be typing. Okay. So Raj Submarinian is asking us if um, are there any areas of the app that we think we deserve extra attention knowing now what we know now after testing for half, more than half of the competition. We have one hour to go, folks, so start working on your test reports now. If I had Clint in the Hangout, I could ask him, and he might have some insight. But I currently have no Clint. Um, well, any, if you heard anything, Damien, that's, that's sparking you that you think that people might want to investigate based on the conversation so far? Jason was saying seemed to indicate that all the functionality it has is important in one way or the other, so it's hard to rank. I would, I mean, I would look at all of the different import capture formats. I would look at the different key common, keystroke combinations. Can you get to it from your mouse? Can you get to it from the keystroke combination? Can you customize a keystroke combination? Try to get some <coughs> confidence in those. I would say, I'd be, go ahead. Uh, sorry, logically, if the, if the app does two main things, it captures stuff and it allows you to edit the stuff you captured. One comes before the second. One comes before the other. If you can't do one, then you can't do the other. Sure. So I would say, in the absence of other information, perhaps the capturing might be more important. Because if you can't do the capture, then you can't do two different That's functions. That's certainly in the place I'd start. Certainly the place I'd start. But even if I found bugs in capture, I'd test the other one because um, Jason did say that a lot of people actually just use it to mark up files they already had. Do the files have to be captured? You can, you can pull, pull no, you can pull it from your desktop oh, or something. So it's just a basic app. Yeah. If you have a picture of Bill Murray, you can you can make a meme where Bill right. Bill Murray is this. Said absent other info. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all good. You weren't here the whole time. <clears throat> You're just helping me out and keeping me company. You could be you well we'll find if you want to help out, we could maybe help you judge something. Uh, Asia is going to be hard, and involve staying up late, really, late. three to seven a.m. or something. When is Asia um, going? Is the competition then for Asia? Is it June seventh? Judging yeah. is it real time or live? The judging takes. Judging is out. the following week. Yeah, we try. Well, we're going to try to do it in the following week, but it depends on how many teams there are and how much volunteers can put in. And and maybe Jason can do his magical sampling heuristic and. and Lower the work there a little. I'm super excited. Next year, Microsoft sponsor. The losers get flown to Europe and the winners get to the International <laughs> Space Station. Okay, maybe not. Actually, for next year. We are already semi-seriously thinking about country-level competition. Nice. Yo. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking about this, and it, and 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 <clears throat> I probably should not overly speculate on a broadcast medium that is being recorded. <laughs> 
we could change the mod. We could make it ten dollars to register your team, which is like what half of a pizza. And if we did that, then then we could afford to compensate the judges, and we could scale to more teams. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and that's my personal value system. A lot of people would say, "Oh no, as soon as you pay the judges, you spoil everything, and you destroy the volunteer spirit of whatever." But I, I like getting paid, and I like to pay people that work for me. Yeah, especially with the amount of judges you then also would need, or also the, the time or the days the judges uh, would need to be involved, plus more marketing if we want, really want to equally tackle each country. So, yes. Yeah, I have to think about it. How many, how many countries are we going to do? Are we going to do 300 countries? We're not going to do 300 countries. We're not going to run one of these every single day for the year. So we're gonna break them up into geographically, you know. I don't. That's not. If we break them up in geographic regions and say the U.S. is one, and um, and and uh, the Nordic countries are also one. That's just gonna make the Nordic countries really mad, right? <laughs> All the U.S. probably. <laughs> I don't want to mess with Finland. Do you want to mess with Finland? I don't want to mess with Yeah. So, so uh, it's, it's, it sounds exciting. If you get it to, to fly, definitely. I used to belong to the American Auto Duelist Association, and they had a world competition, and um, they did different models, but you could qualify for it by earning points. Hmm. So they would have five or ten different competitions, right? And you had to, actually, there was a lot, hundreds of competitions. You could, if you, if you had a conference, you could have a competition, and you could register it with AADA. And you could get points for going to that competition. Even mm. though APA had no official representative there, they just sent an email saying, here's the people that did it, who's who won, right? And then to get to the Worlds, you just needed to, uh, hey, Clint, everybody, Cl Clint. Hi, Clint. Clint. Welcome. Hi, Clint. Clint. Clint is a senior test dude for um, TechSmith, for makers of, of Snagit. I don't think he's actually working on the Snagit product, but he knows a whole lot about it. Is that right? No, we can't hear you. He's muted. No, it doesn't show, but maybe, maybe volume is uh, low. No, now he's muted. No, he's okay. muted. Anyway. So, Matt, I'm going to head out now. Um, if you've got my cell number, if you run into any more technical issues, uh, ping me, and I'll come back online. Um, I'm going to walk home. I'll be home in about 10, 15 minutes, I Thanks guess. And then I'm going to have than, supper with the kids. Longer than last year. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you it. Bet. Appreciate it. Talk to you later, guys. And uh, look forward to reading all the bug reports uh, when they're done. Thanks, Jason. See you, Alessandra. Second try, Clint? No, still can't no. hear. Maybe try via the settings a different audio setup? So I'm guessing you can hear us, right? Yeah. Yeah, it seems it seems like Clint is saying that he can hear us but his mic, mic isn't working. So well, at least he's here and he can hear us and he can respond to questions. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, what I was saying earlier was that you earn points and then if you earn a certain number of points, you can either enter a certain competition or whatever. We could say any conference that wants can be a qualifier for the worlds, but you have to have so many points to get in, or or you have to have so many points in order to compete in the North American round, so many points to compete in the European, whatever, three points. So first place is three points. If you get second at one conference, you got to go to another conference, and whatever. 
We could, we could make it very, very complex, which might or might not be a good thing. Yeah, and it would also play in the um, what what Jerry Weinberg and Fiona Charles mentioned, state of testing, um, that testers really should get more active in some kind of yeah testing activities. Uh, and I think competition could really fill a, a kind of practical uh, gap. I mean, you have blogs and reading material and uh, maybe even conferences, um, but really like practical exercises in a more widespread way, uh, I haven't seen so far myself as much. Yeah, the, the programming community, the, the programming community is pretty good at katas and various sort of skill reinforcing activities, code retreat. Yeah. And the, the test community, um, we really struggle with that for lots of reasons. One being repeating a, repeating the test kata uh, unless you happen to have six, six, six different builds and someone to walk you through it. Build test mm -hmm. build 204, now these five bugs are fixed, test build 205. Unless you have something like that, it, repeating tests doesn't really make a ton of sense as an exercise. So, yeah, we really struggle with that. And... Uh, I think test competition can be exciting. We can certainly do more. This is the first. This is the first, This is version 1.0, man. It can only get better. Yeah. Yeah, I see it also the lean way. So, uh, like North America will be now our first uh, so far successful experiment. Uh, but I definitely also took down some notes for me what we want to improve. Um, for the next event happening next week, actually. Uh, so it'll be just some communication uh, setup or streamlining on some points. Is it, next, um, is it next Friday? Is it a week? Yeah, next Friday, 2nd May. 1st May is Labor Day in Germany. It's a public holiday. Yeah, I mean, then we have, I think, some weeks off, but then comes the really hard months with three events, and two of the big ones, um, yeah, and then I think for relaxation one month later, the last, it still gives us some time to really plan the final round in the Agile testing days. So my ideas, which I will start discussing with Uwe, uh, my ideas with Diaz and Hilderscheid is to really make it also big, like maybe get some kind of testing reporter guy there, Thing, the what was it the lead editor of, of SQ magazine um, or some other guys and uh, also some kind of live streaming uh, audience uh, like really put some some of the uh, contestants team on a big screen and let people let the audience see what they are actually doing and how they are testing and what they are whatever, clicking and doing, stuff like that. So that is my idea, and I hope um, I can convince my company uh, to implement some of these um, ideas to really make it a big thing at the testing days as well. Yeah, I hope so. I, I ran a test competition once at a certain conference, and um, they ran it right along with the tracks. So you go to a track. Yeah. We go to the test competition. We really didn't get a ton of participation. And they didn't want to announce it at the general session because that would be insulting the track <laughs> being against me. So we didn't get a lot of people there. Yeah. And a lot of great evals. The people that win had a lot of fun, a lot of value. But and then when it came time to give out the awards, it was just a bit yes. That's why why we, we took advantage um, to place it on the tutorial day. But also in the like late afternoon, uh, because then we also decided um, to open it for the public. So you don't need to be uh, to have a conference pass or whatever. Uh, anybody who walks in uh, in the hotel in the conference hotel uh, can join and participate. So and uh, plus we are not in competition to to other keynote speakers or even the tutorials. Uh, and we can also take it relaxed, uh, plus it fits well in the awarding ceremony. 
uh, to make it also yeah public and nice for the actual world champion. Now Matt is muted. I'm asking Damien an awkward question. I should know the answer. Sorry. Ah, okay. How about now? Am I somebody who can? Yes, welcome. I can talk now? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey. So now we see the problem with having uh, two sets of settings visible, because there's, a, there's a, a settings menu on the left, and there's also a settings menu at the top. So I was working with the settings menu on the left <laughs> and not the one on the top. So to respond to what Matt said earlier, that, that's correct. I am a tester with the Technus Corporation that makes Snagit, but I am not a tester on Snagit, nor am I, nor am I a, uh, a product person on Snagit. So I can't speak much to like the product priorities of Snagit, but I, I do use it every day, and I am so, somewhat familiar with its functions. So we got a question from the field. I was using this rhetoric of the capture menu. There isn't literally a capture menu on the PC, right? The the UI affordance is not called capture. I misspoke. Right? The, uh, the uh, there was a mention earlier about how there's like it's a a twofold process where there's like capturing and then there's editing. Um, I think that our uh, the way that we look at it is more like. There's capturing, and then there's editing, and then there's sharing. Or the the sharing would be like to like transmit it someplace out onto the to the internet, or onto your FTP server, or into an email, or into a Word document, or whatever. Um, in in generally, uh, the capture menu you, you you initiate a capture by either clicking on the widget that's attached to the top of your screen, or wherever you've dragged it, or you can launch it by a hotkey. You can also uh, Change the behavior of that launch by uh, uh, in Snagit 12. If you mouse over that uh, that widget, then it'll give you like a settings menu, and you can change the, the behavior of that launch. If that makes sense. Um, in, in general, the, uh, the capture menu you initiate a capture by. If it's attached to the top of your screen, you can drag it. While Eric got their mics on. Uh, change the behavior of that launch by. Uh, uh, in Snagit 12, if you mouse over the, uh, that widget, then it'll give you like a settings menu and you can change the behavior of that launch. If that makes sense. Um, in general, uh, the capture menu. Yes. yes. Do you have the YouTube video running? I do have the YouTube video running. Should should I not have that running? You gotta pause that. You gotta pause that because it's it's looping oh. back infinitely. Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. It's okay. It's just kind of funny. It's meta. Yeah, you, you get the same speech three times, it seems like. And if you don't turn it on, it just it keeps going. So you recognize that it's a problem and you laugh about it, and then you hear yourself laughing about it and recognizing that it's a problem. Right. It's just that you can't, can't outweigh it.
So I had to restart my Firefox. It's soaking up memory and getting very sluggish here. So I met Clint at the Mid Michigan Testers Meetdown. I'm pretty sure um, where I did my um, was it? It was the uh, minefield problem, not the minefield, the, the battleship exercise the first time, which was pretty unpolished. I seemed to come to Lansing and do my new stuff. Uh, and he didn't write me off, which was nice. And then he went to CAS last summer and, yep. and did uh, the Code and Coffee. No, not Code and Coffee. What did you call it? Lean, uh, lean Coffee. Lean. Right? Had a lot of fun. But I, I, don't, I don't think you're signed up for Test Retreat this year. Are no, I, I don't have a plan to go to CAS this year. Oh. Okay. Yeah, uh, it was just... Uh, it was one of those things where, like, we only we only have like you know we only send a few people to things every year that kind of thing. Well, what do you mean? You should come work for Exelon. I'm sorry. You should come work for Exelon. We send people everywhere all the time. <laughs> I noticed that you go to a lot of conferences. 2014, I got a little aggressive. It, it's a little much. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I was going to say something. Oh, oh! Come to Germany. Go to go to Agile Testing Days. Well, we were we were going to try to go by being part of the Software Testing World Cup, but then we had to recuse ourselves because you guys ended up using our software. So what we're going to do is we're going to let TechSmith compete on a different continent. So if you're willing to compete at a ridiculous time, like three o'clock in the morning or something, um, I think we're going to let you guys we're going to let you play. You're going to be judged by people who are not, you know, you're going to be judged by that continent's judges, so, um, and have an opportunity to win. Now, of course, if you do win, if you win for Africa, I think the Africans might be a little annoyed. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out, right? Yeah, well, yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really worried about the problem of beating an entire, an entire continent of other testers. I think that that probably won't be a problem for us, but it, I, I, we did sign up because we wanted to. Uh, it was going to be a team building activity for us. Like I thought it would be a good way to uh, four of us to get together and see how we could collaborate better. Um, and we did, did do a bit of talking about that while we were setting up and uh, like gearing up for the event. So that was interesting. That was that was pretty fun. Yeah, I'm pleased, and I, I am. You know, I'm sorry. I think it, the other Highland software wanted to volunteer, and I think they're going to do South Africa. And it was the same sort of a thing, like, but then we can't play. <laughs> like, the most engaged people that had leadership that was in, most interested are also the ones that uh, are most willing to um, take uh, uh, collaborate with us and, 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 and give some software. And, and you, have to, you kind of put yourself out there a little bit when you put beta software in the hands of of uh, more than a hundred testers, you don't know, right? True, true. But like at the, at the same time, it's really great because like Snagit Twelve is going to be in the field relatively soon. So having uh, having some feedback from some, you know engaged testers is pretty wonderful. Which is easy for me to say because I'm not the tester that's going to have to deal with the feedback from the other testers for Snagit because <laughs> I don't work on Snagit. Yeah. yeah. Well, may I, I, may I chip in? Uh, two things I would like to say. Uh, first, um, we can give, or we already did uh, give TechSmith um, a free conference pass for the Agile testing days. So if you get your expenses, travel expenses covered, so then the conference is no uh, big deal from our side. Uh, because, yeah, we are really glad that you supported the event. And uh, the other thing I would like to address to the YouTube uh, listeners, and um, because the first test reports are coming in, and uh, please state your team name uh, into the subject line. I will write it now again on the YouTube channel, um, because that makes it easier um, for us to, yeah, to grade you and put it on the uh, right team name and not uh, mix it up. That's for me. Thanks.
Simon is saying five minute warning. They've actually, according to the published schedule, and believe me, I, I would love to make it just three hours flat and done. Um, we'll go until 9.30. So we've got an extra half hour because we planned that first time with the project. If you're out of energy and you're not finding any defects and you're tired and you've been running hard, you know, it's okay. You can file your bug report early. In fact, to be frank, if you try to run to the last minute, it's likely to be late. And if you're more than a couple of minutes late, we're going to start aggressively demoting, taking points off. So when you, you want to start watching that clock about right now, start getting them on the test report. Was the expectation that the test report would be in by nine? Is that the is that the idea? Nine thirty. So right now it is eight fifty six. You can be light saving. You have to be in by nine thirty. You can be light saving. So you've got to both get a test, file bugs, and write your test report. Good strategy. All of it in real time. Three and a half hours. And really, the first half hour was like a meet and greet with the judges and stuff. Uh, with the um, which is a lot, by the way. I think um, I think Kaner and Bach suggest in lessons learned, dive in and quit as a strategy. And they say half hour to forty five minute sessions. So you could get what's that somewhere between between four and six sessions in, give yourself some breaks in there. If you've just been testing, 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 you might want to stand up and walk around and you know give yourself a break. Now, three hours, three and a half hours is a long time to sit down and test. It's sort of an interesting testing problem because uh, Snagit is like a is a product that's been around since like 1991 or something, and so it's like 23 years old. And uh, with that with that in mind, like getting it you know tested in like three hours is like you know you really got to set the scope of what what you're going to test and like you know kind of make a decision about the areas that you want to test as opposed to going we're going to cover Snagit this 23 year old product in three hours, which would be you know, I know you have four people, or a maximum of four people in a group, but you know that's it's completely impossible. It'd be funny. Damon was just saying, what could you go to like old oldtrialware.com and find Snagit 1.0 or 2.0, and then install it, <laughs> and then put this on top of it and see what it does? Like, could it even recognize the Windows registry key entry for the old software? That'd be funny. Yeah. The first, the first version of Snagit, I think, came out for the first version of Windows. Ninety one. Yeah. What did it run on? Like GeoDesk or something? Did it capture text? I I'm not exactly sure, but like it, it was it was used to document that like the, fir, the like documentation specialists use it for the first version of Windows. That's like how that's its history. That's where it came from. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah, no, I was just thinking. So one of the things I'm interested in, and I, I'm pretty sure Clint is too, is in models of coverage. We talk about coverage like it's this thing and you get to the complete coverage, but there's just different ways to visualize coverage. There's tons of them. And so if you have 12 person hours, four people, three hours apiece, on a dial of 1 to 10, how much coverage could you get? Like, could you go really, really shallow and say that I got an overall coverage of 2 or... What Clint was suggesting, which I think makes sense, is we're going to get pretty good coverage in these five areas, right? And that we decided these five were important because of what Jason said, which I think is a reasonable way to do it. And, and that's what you want to put in your test report. And there's lots of ways to do a test report. But I like um, high-level status, the defects that gave us that conclusion, the coverage that gave us that everything else was fine, what else did we, you know... And then our test strategy, our approach, why we pick that approach, right? And that, 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 that tells your, your reader a lot, and it tells it in a way where he can read the, the, first, the first three paragraphs, and that's good enough for me. And to me, one of the things that, like, well, like, the, the instinct is to say... Go ahead. 
Yeah, but, I, I want to uh, I want to say that the, this product has been like well tested in whatever a lot of time that I have, even if that is totally impossible, right? And, and so at, at that point, it would be like, for me, a test report for Snagit in three hours would be largely saying what you didn't test, right? Because there's a, like a lot of things left to, left over where you say like. Okay, we did test these things, and we also identified these huge swaths of the product that we didn't yep. get around to. Because Absolutely. It was yeah, one thing, one one good thing that um, that's a good point to make that I've I've done before in a test report. If you gave me three more hours, this is what I would do. And uh, you know, here's the risk of leaving that completely uncovered. And if you gave me six more hours, this is what, and twelve more hours, this is what I would do. And you're sort of giving a menu to senior management so they can say ship it. I don't really think it can test reports much on, on real clients, but occasionally with outsourcing work, it still happens, right? So, so management could look at that and say, ship it, or, gee, I'd really like to know what would happen if you tried these things you didn't have time to. Take take another day, right? So you're giving them a menu of what to order, the three-hour version of the test, the nine-hour, the whatever. Um, people love options. They, they love options. They, 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 the false argument of, is it ready to ship, no, why not? Like, I don't want to have I don't want to have those conversations anymore. That we could we could do that 20 years ago and, and put that to bed. So um, Damon and I were just talking about this, and, and um, similar. I was at Target. I didn't get the picture in time, but Target does daily stand-up meetings. They like have their work shift get together, and they talk about the whatever the key things are, and they go do it. Target the big box grocery store. Uh, Target the big box everything store that some of the super targets have groceries. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so they they're doing like some kind of lean I don't know what it is but but um, in the agile world there's a lot of there's a lot of um, energy around agile for the business 
and then you have the conference and like four people show up, like Agile Beyond Software, four people. But I think some companies are really doing it. They're just calling it lean. I think that's what Target. I don't. I think I read that somewhere. But I saw it. That's the point. I was at Target and I was like, hey, that's their daily stand-up. It's just right in front of everybody, and they're just going through their list of stuff. It's all good stuff. It's like, Joe, we got to make sure the bathroom's clean. Like they want their customers to see them doing this, right? I suppose it's good because it's also like it kind of works as a recruiting thing, right? Because you go, wow, our employees are pretty empowered here at Target. They also they, they talk and they offer feedback and that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You're like, hey, you mean it's not a team? Like, sorry, it is a team. Like, I don't just stand there and fold shirts all day and the boringest job ever. Like, there's an opportunity to improve the method. I don't just execute that. I mean, uh, compared to a lot of sort of classic retail Americana, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think next one we can do in three hours. We gotta talk to Uve about that before he sends emails out. Next week. Yeah. I think next week is like ten teams. So next week, we gotta find some software. I have to talk to Michael Larson Monday. Well, Texan's got more software. <laughs> it's not just saying it. <laughs> If you want to, if you want to supply testing for other text text products, that's always fine. I will talk to Jess about it. But I, we have one volunteer. I'm just a little worried because next up is Oceana, and it's a company that makes web-based software out of Silicon Valley, and there might be like uh, bandwidth problems and network propagation delay that are mm -hmm. not anybody's fault, right? Right. Like, so I, I don't I just don't want people to have a terrible experience and file a bunch of bug reports about performance that are just like ah it's just it's slow because you're you're in Australia, right? Yeah, we have a like uh, our latest product is uh, our TechSmith Relay product, which is like ho uh, video sharing and hosting stuff. And University of Hawaii has is a customer, and. They, you know, they they call the support department saying like the performance stinks. It's like it, it's like it's coming in really slow, and we're like, well, it's hosted in Azure, and it's like in the, our Azure servers are like in Tennessee or whatever. So like, you guys are in Hawaii, and it you're gonna get some latency. You're really really far away. That it, like it's yeah, sort of built in inherent problem. <clears throat> That's really interesting because sort of the appeal of Azure implied and the cloud is like the cloud is everywhere and it's a grid and you just crank it on. And certainly Amazon kind of implies, well, we've got servers everywhere and it's based on demand and we we'll spool them up. And you need to, it's, it's, it's elastic. The elastic EC2 is the elastic compute cloud, right? Like we we'll just spool it up as you need it. You don't have to manage it. I hadn't I hadn't thought of that as a problem for the, the cloud. I know... Um, like you can, there are services like Akamai that, that that cache your content, and their whole job is to keep local servers. Like so content it, and delivery network type stuff, like CDNs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that really only works for cache static pages, for things like no, it's a web app that randomly generates the right answer, and you need the whole app to get you the answer to generate the page. It just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. but that uh, can also be your single point of failure. We had that in the newspaper project where I'm in, because they use Akamai also for caching and varnish and so on. And yeah, then Akamai had a problem which uh, escalated all around the global data centers, and that was it with um, the caching and so on. So the That's hit rates on the website were really crappy for that time period. Yeah, that's bad. I think the, the term for that is bad. <laughs> what is WT? Go ahead. Sorry. What is WT? I just saw that show up in the Google uh, Plus chat. Weekend testing. Oh, okay. I wonder if we could find a way to just kind of leverage weekend testing, AST and this competition to kind of work together more closely. A lot of the weekend testing guys are judges for this, and gals. Um, but uh, uh, 
AST, we were thinking about creating a test competition, test, um, test challenges, special interest group. Very oh, that would be great. Very similar to what Miyagido was doing. And then that special interest group would run the annual test competition at CASP every year. Um, we just, uh, those of us that were involved in this kind of looked around and said, how overcommitted are we already? Can we <laughs> Existing commitments. Yeah. We really want one more thing. Yeah, th th that's always the question, isn't it? It's not about do I want to do it. It's can I fit it in. Yeah. yeah. Or what is? So what I'm trying, I'm trying to get into now, which Clint has alluded to, I completely failed at with conferences this year, is what are the two or three great things I want to do, really great, and I will do them to done done, and then I have to turn down ten good things I'd also like to do. And I'm I'm just not very good at that. Um, I'm working on it. Yeah, right. that, that that's a good heuristic. I, I'm I'm not good at it either. And since I've got here to America, that I got to know you guys more than when I was in Australia, far away with the with the, the different hours and all of that. I've I've got involved in, in so many projects because you 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 listen you listen to what you know what's gonna be. You get excited and you just want to do it. And that's a good thing. But when you get like seven projects running at the same time, probably not as much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I hear something you. Something that would be cool, and this is something that I've, like we were looking at is in the run-up to the Software Testing World Cup, actually, is uh, something you mentioned before was the idea of practice websites, I guess, or like this is something that like I figured would just exist because like because everything that you want is just going to be on the internet. You just Google it, and there it is. But we we couldn't find it. It was like websites that were out there or like applications that were there to test like how do I put this applications that you want to test because you, to, to practice testing were not really available for us right there, there there's some the very targeted ones like you know here's a vulnerable here's a security vulnerable web app from Google or whatever but like that's not necessarily everything we wanted to test we didn't necessarily want to do penetration testing we wanted to do like all over testing as a team building exercise and to like you know work on our, our cooperation and our organization and say like okay here's a here's a larger application how, how would you do this at, to like you know as an onboarding thing for new testers or whatever like how do you get together as a team and decide how we like to do these things we have that same challenge on weekend testing um, we try to pick up a, a new a new web app or a new application every month to, to test it and to practice testing with the, the people that show up. And we find that um, any website is really good for testing. You just need to really pick what you want to test. And you can, if, even though there is no websites that are specific to help test, I mean, there is a couple. I know of the, the, uh, the workroom productions, the, 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 the machines for workroom productions, that they are geared towards testing. But um, if you are really, really, if you're wanting to to practice testing, you can really pick up any website and just um, practice. I guess I worried a little bit because some of the things that we do as tests would be consider considered somewhat hostile to a website <laughs> owner, right? Like you, you don't you don't want to start like trying to do SQL injection against like Amazon. <laughs> Uh, absolutely not. You've got to be very careful with that. Absolutely. We're talking more about functional tests, you know, your your you know your usual sort of functional tests. But yeah, if if you're going to do some security attacks or SQL injections, you definitely need to make sure that the company is aware and it's it's on board with that. But um, I know one guy from Czechia, Eusebio. He's earning now really quite good money. Uh, because a lot of the big companies really pay uh, bug bounties for especially security or other um, yeah security faults or flaws in their systems. So yeah, as long as you're not really running DDoS or something, uh, it might be fair game. I mean, think about the the infamous uh, parking lot calculator. Um, I don't know if they fixed that by the by, by now. No, they haven't fixed that. I looked <laughs> at that. I, I had a, a mentoring session with uh, with one of the weekend testing mm. um, guys, and 
I, I was curious as well because I used that when I started being mentored by Anne Marie years ago, and it's still the same thing. It's exactly the same problems, exactly the same bugs. It's incredible. At least I have humor. <laughs> exactly. So, nearly the two minutes warning, kind of. Wait, how many minutes? My math says 20, wait, 14 minutes, right? 14, 15 minutes left. Is my hand on the mic, on the mic again? My math says 14 minutes left. Yes. Right. All right. So we should be finishing up our test reports. We should be finishing up our final bugs. We should be looking at winding down. It can take a surprisingly amount of time to write a nice prose English test report. Something we discussed with our uh, the the four person team that I had formed for the World Cup before we decided to to you know either put it off into another country or just not do it. But the uh, the idea of having like a template for your test test report, you know, like kind of having like a bunch of fill in the blank stuff um, as a like a word template or something, that, which is like it's kind of interesting because like we we never deliver anything like that in our internally in our company. Because we're we're all sort of like living in the same tools all the time, so like the report is like okay, we use Team Foundation Server for certain kinds of bugs, so like the test report is the status of the bugs in TFS or the status of the bugs in GitHub or whatever the issues it would be in GitHub. Yeah, yeah. No, I, that's what, I've been thinking about that, right? So there's a couple of things. There's go look at the it yourself. We visualize it. Our work in progress inventory is very small. There's only a few bugs at a time in tip. Just go figure it out, right? And then there's having a conversation, which are probably two of the more common ways to do this, right? Like we have a daily stand-up meeting, and we say, these are the top five bugs, and we can't ship them, whatever. Um, it would be interesting to try to take that into the competition. So your test report could be, not this time, but an mp3 file of you telling us the status. Done. Right? That would be a really interesting... And then how do we evaluate the value of those two? In many cases, compared to some of the reports we saw last year, I would rather have someone's audio for two minutes telling me the status of the software and some of the stuff we were given last year. I mean, I don't mean to be overly critical, but the company was clearly trying to force their standard template, which they were given, to report status into uh, the test competition. And there was no context, and it was um, 75 open bugs, 35 of which are um, uh, performance bugs, and 15 are non-functional bugs, and um, you know, uh, pass 85 out of 100 test cases. And I had no idea what any of it meant at all, <laughs> at all. Yeah. It was like a cover page, but there was no second page. Yeah, there's, there's this concept of the audience up for a document, right? And so, like, what when we're doing our testing on my product, which is not Snagit again, but it's another TechSmith product, uh, we use, like, this collaborative mind mapping thing where, like, so everybody can see what the status of testing is and, like, okay, this this section of the map over here is green and this section over, the, over here of the map is, is red because of these three bugs or whatever. And that's pretty useful for us while we're testing, um, so we can see where 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 to test or where not to test and all those things. But then when the time comes to actually communicate the status of the product as opposed to the status of the testing, uh, I think at that point you got to put your like your journalist hat on and say like, okay, what's the headline here and what's what's below the fold? Like some of these things are like stuff that would be interesting to people who are interested and then some of them are just like the, the, what they're really interested in, in, in is whether or not the product is capable of being released right now and then we can go on and, and fix things next time. Can I, can I ask which mind mapping tool do you use uh, that has collaboration in it? Uh, we use MindMup. 
okay. which is which is Goico Agix one. Right, because I, I, I've tried two or three mind mapping tools, and I do use mind mapping every day, but I haven't found one that has a good collaboration sort of feature in it. So I'm going to try that one. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, it. it the, the collaboration mode in MindMup is really cool, uh, I, but at the same time, I will say that it's very new. And by new, I mean that, that like you have to put up with a certain amount of... Uh, you have to be pretty forgiving. <laughs> I'm okay with that. No problem, as long as there is something, because the, the, ones, uh, the ones I've used in the past, there is nothing. There is no collaboration whatsoever, so it, it makes it really hard, even though I have a, I have a relatively small team, it's if you don't have any collaboration, it kind of makes it you know it, it's a bit useless. So I'm I'm okay to put up with with bugs. I don't mind. Yeah, it, it is. It's really nice because it's it like it, it's got the it, it uses Google Drive real time as a back end. So it's kind of like Wave or like Google Docs or whatever. Where like you can see that somebody's typing and then blam, there's their changes while you're looking at the document, which is great. Yes, uh, it sounds awesome. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, like. People become very accustomed to the like, oh well, it's just everything that I type is automatically in the system, and then they find out that like their browser got out of sync or whatever, and they they've been typing for 15 minutes, and then it all got lost. So like, you have to be really careful with it for that reason. Oh, okay, yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah, um, Damien was saying that, um, and and that's kind of what I was thinking about when I talk about a document test report, the, the summary, and then the. the, the the key bugs, and then more information about bugs, and then how you coverage models and that kind of stuff. But uh, with mind mapping tools, you have the ability to have dr drill down, and you can do summary and more information and more information and more information and more information. Then the audience can drill down into things they care about and level of detail they care about, um, which I haven't done a ton of. Um, but it's, it sounds fantastic. I once considered using a help file maker. To deliver a report. No, because oh, the hyperlinks and the exactly, yeah. and they allow subtitle, or subsections, parent-child relationships, nested. Yeah, and it actually worked pretty well to deliver that type of information. You could even search on it too. It had tags that you could uh, assign to different areas and different sections. Nice. What was it, was somebody just saying they were using a help file for that, or like a CHM file or something? Once, yes. This is, the, 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 mm -hmm. this is Damon Sinodinos. Sinodinos. I'm keeping that. Um, Columbus, Ohio. Who's, who's in town for the lean software, leanness tomorrow? I experimented it's once. Lean. With it's really lean. Using help files, yes, CHMs to. Efficient way to. Oh, uh, I muted you. Start over. He, start, he experimented with CHM files to see if that was an efficient way to. To, uh, yeah, deliver. A, Test summary reports, or whatever you call them, because then you could have uh, top level top level titles that had child subtitles that had children of their own, and you could drill down to whatever level of detail you wanted. And the uh, structure of a help file seemed to uh, to be suited well for that type of information. It's interesting. So is anybody using, well, I don't know. It seems like San Francisco Depot and Mind Maps is the new hotness for, for coverage modeling, right? It's good. It's good. I'm interested in the new hotness after that. That's so old. That's like last summer. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's not new news. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's I've, I'm into that, like the, using mind mapping and using the uh, the mnemonics, like the, the rapid software testing style mnemonics. It I'm I'm familiar with it, but like I'm the 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 testy guy on my team. But like the developers that I'm helping learn to test don't know about any of that stuff. So it takes a while for that to become ingrained in the culture. So. The the trick now is actually getting other people interested in it. For me, it's it, it's like 
I'm interested in learning new things, but also like trying to get like sell the value of those ideas is more of a long term project, I guess. Yeah, what I'm doing, what I'm doing now, and we're talking about it tomorrow, is what I'm interested in. I think I've developed some metrics that don't stink, where we could talk about status of the project, product, testing, entire delivery cycle. Where is the bottleneck in the flow of that delivery cycle? When are we going to get done knowing that what we know? And it actually stands up to some amount of scrutiny. And they're mostly um, things like cycle time, lead time, touch time, that are, that are very, very rarely measured. Uh, and uh, that's really excites me. But it's all, it's all measurement and management stuff. The M weird. word, the measurement word, that's a, that's a biggie. Are you going to record the presentation? I'd love to hear about that. Uh, well, um, it's uh, it's um, you're going to come to the test retreat, right? We'll talk about we'll talk about a test retreat. Awesome. Yep. I'll def I'm, I'm definitely going. Yep. And a, and a couple other places. But this is this is the new material that I'm building out. So this is this is lean software testing, lean software delivery, the courses that I'm building. Um, but we could get you hooked up with the the reviewers group maybe. Um, so help me build them. So the thing we're doing tomorrow, half the people that are getting there are getting there free. The other half are remarkably discounted, and we're doing the first public offering of the class. So um, hopefully they'll tell me how terrible cool. it is before I go do it for <laughs> how to fix it. Not just it's bad, but I want how to fix it. Right? So, so we're going to have Ed Blackman, who is a behavioral psychologist and a Six Sigma master black belt. Uh, who's been doing process improvement for large hospital groups for the past 10 years. He's going to be in the class tomorrow. Um, and he's, like, really smart. He's working on his Ph.D. at Western right now. Um, and he's going to be in the class, and he'll tell me that I'm misunderstanding the way Taichi Ono used lead time and, right, the TPS. It's, it's going to be great. Sounds like a lot of fun. We have two minutes left, folks. So you need to get your bug reports in, right? I mean, two minutes. And I'm seeing maybe 10, 10, 12. It might seem What's that, Clint? How many teams were in this uh, this leg of the competition? 44. And I am not seeing 44 bug reports or, or test reports yet. And so far, also no surprises in the uh, format. PDF, Excel, but Word document is still leading. It's a Friday. And so I think last year we had 17 teams. I think maybe a couple of them couldn't figure out the tech implementation technology, just couldn't figure out, like, email didn't work, or they couldn't figure out how to get into YouTube or something. And a couple of them didn't spend all three hours and just played around and didn't ever write a report. We probably had about 70% of the teams actually turn in test reports last time. So, and my clock says one minute left, so I expect some teams are going to turn them in a minute late, two minutes late. I'm not going to kill you because you couldn't get to the submit button fast enough. It's not the end of the world. <laughs> you get more than five, six, seven, eight, ten minutes late, then you genuinely have an advantage and, you know, we're going to have to start knocking points off. But get it in. Get done. The first test report was 18 minutes ago, 8-0. I think there was one from a long time. I think there was one. I think Sherry Chupka turned in one a while back. Let me check. And of course, a, a test report that comes too late is certainly got a, a direct analogy to real-world software testing. Yep, that's funny. Yeah, I'm looking at one from the the, the, the turn of the hour. Anim, Aminur Rahman turned in, turned in one at 8:02 p.m. So they turned it in an hour and 28 minutes early, which is fine. Because uh, if your brain is anything like mine is at this point, I don't know how much value you'd be delivering at the last... Oh, it's 9.30. Ding, ding, ding. Turn in your test reports now. Done. <laughs> it's over. I'm going to tweet. Ding, ding, ding. It's over.
and we'll stick around for a minute, and then I think it's time for us to say good night. All right. Yeah, they keep coming now. Remind me of the address test report at software testing world cup dot com, right? Come again. Test report at software testing world cup dot com. That is yes. All right, there's a little known rule that Google Hangouts cannot go for more than four hours, and we are just about there. So Google itself will shut us down in about seven more minutes. So I think, uh, I think it's time for us to call it a night. And uh, I really appreciate it, Mike, uh, Ali, all the time that you guys give. I'll be on email you on Monday, and we'll be ridiculously busy all week and then Friday Mike we're doing it again and Australia at least has less teams registered to be frank. <laughs> yes, that's that, true. That'll be a easy it'll be our bye week. Then it'll be already routine. <laughs> <laughs> it'll make yeah. it three hours instead of three and a half and we'll get I'll try to get some more sleep the night before. So okay. all right guys, thanks you so much. Yeah, thanks. And, thanks uh, Lynn for joining. All right guys. Lysandra. Talk to you next week. All right. Where do take Good care. Good night. Good night.